Hey, this is Ricky Rocks, and you are listening to Rocks100.com. The Big Rock. The Big Rock. Keeping the music alive. Bon, bon Jovi. Lenny Kravitz. Hey, all you rockers. This is Johnny J, your host for The Big Rock. Catch me right here on Rocks 100 as we are keeping the music alive, rocking the 70s, 80s, and 90s. The Big Rock on Rocks 100. Rock. The Big Rock. The Big Rock. The Big rock. Everything that rocks. Rocks. Hey kids, would you like to be a rock god the likes of David Lee Roth in his heyday? Then you need to get the Ricky Rocks Rock God Starter Kit. Each kit comes complete with black nail polish, eyeliner, sparkly scarf, an actual chick magnet, a velvet jacket to make all the girls go wild, and an over-the-hat skull cap with bandana accessory. Act Now will also include a handy booklet showing you all the best places to wear your sunglasses at night. Regularly at $29.95 value, now yours free when you take advantage of this fabulous offer. But don't act just yet. We'll also throw in a wall poster chart diagramming all the best rock bases to enchant your audience, proven to wet the ladies' panties in mere seconds. For all you newbies, this great kit also includes a CD demonstrating how to push your voice for the radio, taught by Ricky Rocks himself. So quit being a big puss and man up rock style with the Ricky Rocks Rock God Starter Kit. Now yours for just $29.95 plus $99.95 shipping and handling. Call now. 1-800-ROCK-GOD. That's 1-800-R-O-C-K-G-O-D. Now. Operators and tattooed hookers are standing by to take your order. Feel your best before making an arrest. What you gonna pick? Cop pockets when you don't want something salady. Avoid police brutality. What you gonna pick? Cop pockets. Cop pockets filled with juicy jelly, mouth-watering maple and bacon, and creamy custard on a crispy donut. When you want an easy meal while you're busting that your deal, what you gonna pick? Cop pockets. The cop meal in a pocket. What, what you gonna, gonna pick? pick? Did you wake up this morning with a nasty rash and nothing but regret? Did you go home with a sweaty bass player last night? Did you wake up wanting to chew your own arm off because some skank's laying on it? Are you feeling a burning, itching sensation in your crotchal region? Do you feel like you need to scratch your ass with tree bark? Are you walking around like you were banged with a scud missile? Did you meet someone at the bar you thought would actually call you back? <laughs> Idiot! Then you need Skankasporin. Mm. It'll cool that burning sensation before you do the walk of shame to the cab. That's Skankasporin Itch Paste. Available at In-N-Out Party Stores, Bottles and Stuff, 8 Mile Liquor, and Cunningham Drugs. <clears throat>
following program is recommended for mature individuals and may contain material unsuitable for morons, cretins, and dishwipes. If you are a moron or a member of the PTL club, please turn off your radio because we don't need any more stupid, narrow-minded, pencil-neck geeks who wouldn't know the First Amendment if it came up and bit them on the butt. Thank you. Ricky Ricky Rocks, Ricky Ricky Rocks It's Ricky Rocks, coming out of the box Bitches come in frocks, trying to steal his jocks He needs to be contained with padded rocks It's the Ricky Rocks show, spreading like the pox uh. Ricky Ricky Rocks, Ricky Ricky Rocks uh. Ricky Ricky Rocks, Ricky Ricky Rocks, yeah Ricky Ricky Rocks, Ricky Ricky Rocks uh. Ricky Ricky Rocks, Ricky Ricky Rocks, yeah Ricky Rocks up to your grill, motherfucker yeah. Okay. Got that. Got that. Got that. And we are ready to go. Episode number one hundred and thirteen of the Ricky Rock Show, right here. Or one hundred thirty-three. Why did I say one hundred thirteen? One hundred thirty-three of the Ricky Rock Show, right here on Rocks One Hundred dot com. I am Ricky Rocks, back from my two-week hiatus, sabbatical, whatever you want to call it. It seems like I'm going on a lot of vacations on this show. A lot. <laughs> And joined by Mr. Mike Dropper, Larry Smith from Fallen Stronger. How you doing, homie? I'm doing great, brother. Yeah, sounds doing like great. we were talking. It sounds like you had a, you had a good week. We had a fucking great week, bro. <laughs> and we'll we'll get into all that. You know, there's stuff we can't talk about, but uh, God, it was saucy. I wish we could. Right. And how I'd love to throw people under the bus, but I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm going to hold back. Uh, so super cool. We got a lot to talk about on the show today. Of course, we're going to have our beer of the week, our pump it or dub it band of the week, and our nuts and bolts and harsh truths. We're also going to be talking about... Uh, uh, Larry, you know, people that don't know he's with all the guns and stuff. You're a security guy, ran security at the Fozzy show at diesel. Uh, was that one of those shows that were like relocated from like St. Andrews or something like that? Cause yes. okay. Yep. Yeah. For those who don't know, we have a legendary venue here in Detroit called St. Andrews hall. Did you see that video of the floor of the floor? Like <laughs> buckling? I did. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So for those who don't know, St. Andrew's hall, there's a big hall upstairs and underneath there's an, a smaller venue called the shelter. Uh, if you saw eight mile, the, like the battle stuff that yep. was done there. So, uh, this place is like old as shit. And there was like some rapper from Vegas or something like that, that, that came through a couple weeks ago. And, uh, there was a guy, I'm sure you can find it, uh, on, on the interwebs, but, uh, you know, a guy taking a video and from underneath, you know, from the shelter yeah. and the floor is just vroom, <laughs> vroom, vroom. and they're like over capacity and all that. And I guess like, you know, I was talking to Tim Brunel cause he used to work out there. Right. And he's like, yeah, it was just one, uh, anchor or something that they have for the floor broke. So I'm like, so what's that even mean? He's like, well, if that show would have kept going, the floor would have just collapsed and you would have had like a thousand people fall through the floor. Right. And I'm like, oh my God. You know, so the Fozzy show got relocated over at Diesel. We'll be talking about that in a little bit. Uh, where are we talking about my uh, debauch? Oh, that just popped right off. Uh, we'll be talking about my Florida trip and my 17 hour drive done in 30 hours with a uh, wife and two kids, an eight year old and eight month old made the trip. <laughs> We'll get into <laughs> we'll get into that train wreck, and uh, we're also going. I actually before I went to Florida, I actually did go out to a show. Uh, saw Paralandra wearing the shirt uh, today, supporting those guys and lady. Uh, had them on the show uh, probably about two years ago or something like that, and they were out on tour with the Mini Colored Death, who I've also had on the show. Awesome bands. Um, get into that in a little bit as well, uh, but first. But first, we're going to get into our nuts and bolts and harsh truths. Oh, I got to shout out some people in the chat. Uh, Steve Engel from Mississauga, Ontario. Uh, he's living the dream. He just put in his uh, retirement notice last week, so he gets to retire. Ooh. Lucky him. There you go, Steve. Yeah, and uh, Derek Janey's hanging out in there. Sherry Claire, Fatal Conceit is in the chat. And uh, we're going to be talking to them in the 8 o'clock hour. We'll be talking to Tim, David, and Kate Puga uh, from the band in the 8 o'clock hour. The singer, uh, lead rhythm, guitar player, and uh, the bass player. So super cool. We'll be talking to them. Uh, but uh, nuts and bolts and harsh truths right off the bat. Larry, you're you're a guy who's been in a lot of relationships. 
You're not supposed to ask me for advice, bro. <laughs> so this question came in from Jess <clears throat> out of Lincoln, Nebraska. She writes in, she re- oh, and if you guys want to send us your questions about anything, this is obviously obviously relationship advice. You can ask it if you want. Whether you take it, it's your own thing. Ask right. us any question you want about anything, being in a band, being a musician, how venues work, uh, why anything is the way it is, and uh, maybe we'll be able to help. Send us an email, rocks100radio uh, at gmail.com. So this week, we have a question from Jess, Lincoln, Nebraska. Hi, I am not a musician, but just started dating a guy who's in a band. Do you guys have any tips or hacks in dating a musician, seeing as both of you are in bands? We are in our late 20s, and he is a great guy. I've known him for years. Just want to know what I should be. I would be in for if we started dating. Thanks. Larry. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. a, chick, a chick decides, hey, Larry probably has a huge dick, <laughs> and I want to be a part of that game. Okay. I want to invest in this. I want to invest in the dog. What does she, and, and you being in a band, you know, bands that, you know, you're playing weekends. So obviously a lot of times date night is out of the question, unless she wants to come see your band. You know, what are some uh, of the, I guess, pitfalls of dating a musician? Well, you know, right off the bat, they're they're going to be, oh, you're in a band, oh, you're a singer, or you're you're the lead guitar player. You know, but it's it's they're they're so worried about groupies, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. groupies, 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 groupies. You know? Yeah, bouncing back and forth, bouncing back and forth. You know, that's yeah. that's that's their main concern. Obviously, I mean, that was my ex wife's You know, she hated my band. Well, it's yeah, like you 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 mentioned it, and Jeff brings this up a lot, and and Raz would talk about this when you're in a band and you're at a show. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not supposed to be anyway sitting by your merch booth and just sitting there and, or and paying attention to them right. you know you're you're bouncing around you're right. talking to everybody people who are into your band or whatever you want to take that time and you know take time with them mm-hmm. okay so number one to jess if you go to his shows expect him not to pay attention to you pretty much i mean you're you know everybody wants to talk to you everybody wants to see you you're bouncing around from, especially if you're there's there's two stages, you know. Mm-hmm. You're going here, you're going there. That's how it is for me. I walk into a venue, I get a million, hey, what's up? Stop, talk, da 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 da. Yeah. It's to the point where I'm kind of ignoring everybody that I've brung with me, yeah. including my significant other, or girlfriend, or whatever. Yeah. Because that's how it is, mm-hmm. you know. Everybody wants to see you. Everybody wants to talk to you. They want to know what's going on. Da 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 da. Which kind of leaves them on the back burner, going, uh. uh twirling their thumbs like (laughs) and so show stuff aside because you know there's a lot that goes into being a in a band that's not shows right you have practices you have recording you have uh photo shoots and you have going on the road if that's a thing for 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 a band yeah, and supporting other bands and too. supporting other bands you got to get out there and support your other local bands you you got to yeah you go out there and you know like you do and I do, you go out there and get FaceTime, you right. know, people are like, Oh, you know, Ricky, what's going on? You know, this, even if it's not your show, right. You know, so I think the big thing, you know, that we can take away from all this is time. Yeah. You know, there's not going to be a lot of time. Exactly. You know, because a, a, a band will practice anywhere from one to, you know, I've seen bands that practice every, every day, Ave under fire practices every day. And, you're practicing one, two, three times a week. You know, your weekends are, if you're, you know, uh, not playing a show, you're out at a show. Right. You know, and me doing what I do, doing this, I'm out trying to find new bands that I might be into. And, and as a concert promoter, trying to find fresh new bands just so I'm not booking the same bands over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And then you brought up the quote unquote groupie thing. Right. You know, so. You know, that's that's pretty much, you know, Larry summed it up. I mean, that's pretty much it, you know, to Jess and to anybody out there who wants to get involved with a musician, mostly, you know, at any level, really, from the independent thing all the way up to your big touring bands. You know, when you're a big touring band, you know, that time is even right. more rare. Yeah. And here's know? another thing, like, don't get in a relationship with your musician <clears throat> 
if you're not going to support <laughs> your man, you know, and his band. That's a big thing. Like, you know, you're doing something that you love when you have somebody that you're with that doesn't support you. Mm -hmm. It sucks. You know? Yeah, and that's and that's the thing, you know. Another thing to you, uh, ladies or guys out there who are want to get into relationship with a, a guy, you have to love it pretty much as much as they do. Exactly. You know, and if you don't, you're going to get jealous. Exactly. You know that that case in point. You know, uh, Nikki hates going to shows anymore, and it and it's a real, you know, uh, sticking point because I'm right. like, you know, case in point, you know that uh, Paralandra Many Colored Death. I went out to the Token about an hour away from here, right? And she's like, ah, we're going to Florida tomorrow. Do you really have to go to a show tonight? <laughs> and I'm like, well, yeah, I've had both of them on the show. You know, I'd like to put a face to the radio name and the radio thing and all right. that, and. So when out there, she's not, she's not a big fan. She doesn't go to shows anymore. And it, it's, it, it's, a, it, it, it causes a, a, a rift, a tension. And so to any, you, you got to love as much as your guy or girl who's in the band. You got to love being part of that. Right. If you don't, the relationship's going to yeah, fail. Be the merch girl, you know, be the merch girl or, you know, <clears throat> go out and talk to people with them. Right. You know, and, and uh, I think it was before you were on the show, Raz and I talked about the groupie thing. You know, if you're worried about groupies, hang out with them. There you go. You know, be there with them while he's talking to these people. And, you know, see that, you know, the kinds of things musicians will talk to fans and stuff about. It's mostly, oh, we have a new music video. Oh, thanks for coming out. And boom, boom. And sometimes they'll be like, hey, you want to get a drink? It's not like they're trying to pick you up, right? You know, it's like, hey, do great. Let's do a shot or something like that. You know, people want to spend time with people in, in bands, right? And so go with them. You know, you gotta love it just as much as he does, and that that's that's it. I mean, that's really the the crux of getting into relationship with a musician. You gotta love it just as much as they do, if not more, because right. you're gonna be the one not playing. You're the one getting absolutely nothing out of this, but and you're not even spending time with them. Right. <laughs> you, you know. Yeah. You know, you gotta you gotta love the guy's personality. You gotta love the big dick. You gotta you gotta <laughs> love the and you have to really appreciate the time that you do get with him when he's not doing the band thing. You know, so it's hard, you know. So I'd say, you know, to most people that aren't huge fans of music, don't do it. Yeah, stay away because yeah. you're you're uh, <laughs> you're in for a rude awakening <laughs> when that guy that you see every once in a while play on stage is like, hey, it would be great if we go out for dinner, but I have band practice or I have a photo shoot today or we're going to be in the studio all day. I can't spend any time with you. And, you know, uh, I have a show or I'm going out on the road or I have to go check this band out or I need to be here or I, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. It's not just playing shows. So time is going to be at a very minimum for you, no matter how much he loves you. Uh, that's obviously his passion, his thing. And uh, just be prepared for not having a lot of time with him. All right. That's pretty right. much it. So Jess, uh, you got anything, uh, or you guys, Larry, you got anything else to tack onto that one? No, I mean, I think we covered it. <laughs> yeah. That's... I mean, I can tell you stories about my situation. Okay. Let's, let's hear, let's hear well, some first person, you know, the well, kinds you know, of pitfalls that can happen Well, uh, with, with, with the ex-wife. Mm -hmm. You know, I have like a, a picture collage on my wall and I, and I base it off my band mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's got everybody that I've ever took a picture with pretty much, you know, mm -hmm. you, you're in a lot of them. There's a lot of them on, there's a lot of, there's Marie, there's TJ, you know, there's, yeah. there's all the, the women that are in the scene, you know, that are friends with probably every single band damn near that comes through there and they always get a pick with everybody, you know? So I got my picture collage. I got, you know, all, you know, my fans or whatever, you know? And, uh, you know, like I said, my ex, really, really jealous, really hated the band, um, would use it against me with the kids. I mean, to yeah. the point where, you know, she, uh, she ripped my whole collage down, shattered it all, bro, ripped it all. She didn't want to look at the fucking pictures. Who's with, that bitch? Yeah, yeah, right. Like, why am I looking at this chick on, on, on my wall with you, with her? Like, yeah, just push. I had to rebuild yeah. it. I had to rebuild. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a jealousy thing, man. If they're not 100% with you, 
it seems like there's 100 against you. Yeah. You know? There's no in the middle. There's no You can't in the be middle. half in, half out. No, not at all. Not at all. Oh, man. And you know what? If, if, if she doesn't support you 100% anyway, she ain't the right one. You know, and that's the thing. You know, I, I get it a lot at home. And, you know, people tag pictures and all this, and all of a sudden something will pop up. Who's that? Right. I don't know. Somebody will want a picture with me. I have no clue who tagged <laughs> right, it. Right, That's right. who it is. I I don't know. You know, it's like how many pictures have you been tagged in where you're like, I don't even remember who the fuck that is. <laughs> right, right. And suddenly I'm on here, you know, in this picture hugging this chick random. Right. You know, that's the thing of being in bands. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to give hugs and you're, you show your appreciation for them coming out and all for that. Sure. And you don't want to be. Social distancing doesn't work too well when you're conversing with bands <laughs> no. or, or fans and all that, you <laughs> no, know. No. So, you know, there's those pictures that come up and to Jess or anybody else going this situation, you just got you got to have a lot of trust in in your guy that he's not boinking them all, you know, right, or anything right. like that. It might it's usually just something very very simple and innocent. So, to Jess, anybody out there, you you got to have trust and know that he is not going to have as much time with you as you want. All right, so there's that. And uh going back into the chat, I I saw it scrolling and uh there was there was a lot going on there. <laughs> so, uh uh, Capri, if she is a mu musician too, there will be very little time, very little we time. That's another thing, yep. you know, but at the same, at the same point, if you're with somebody that's also a musician, they understand it all. Exactly. They know, they know everything that's, that you're doing yep. and they know the reason for it. So you'd, you'd probably be in a better relationship if, if just learn to play a fucking instrument, join a <laughs> band, you'll, you'll understand everything your boyfriend's going through. Right. Be the backup uh, singer. <laughs> yeah, do do something. Uh, Steve Engel, she could become the roadie and haul the, haul the gear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, tried that for years. Uh, Capri also says, jealousy has no room. Um, Fatal can see it. We were talking about Paralandra and Many Colored Death. They were amazing. Uh, wish I could be there uh, or be a happy patron. Yes. Uh, support is key. The road goes both ways. He would need to support her too. Of course, you know. Right. Uh, but as long as she knows that his time is at a minimum, you know, being in a, in a band is pretty much a, a part, you know, a 20, 30 hour a week job, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that pays absolutely nothing, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, yeah. So, uh, uh, Steve says, note this lips and robo from Anvil had been married to the same one for 30 plus years. And that band has been all through all sorts of tribulation, you know, Anvil, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what the fuck? She should have done that. Should not have done that. Been fatal conceit says been there. Uh, <laughs> so, so super cool. Uh, Jess, hopefully that helps. Just know that his time is at a premium, and there's gonna be no money. Uh, if he's a local musician, if he's a big you know touring rock star, then you can at least rest knowing that he's making some money out there <laughs> being a man whore. <laughs> he's made, exactly. <laughs> you know, at least there's money coming in. Bands are pretty much man whores that don't get paid. Right. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's been a couple of weeks since we've been on here. Uh, last week I was in Florida. The week before that we had a cancellation, so I just mm -hmm. canceled it. Um, what's been going on? I know you have you did the Power Man show, Fallen Stronger. Yeah. Uh, you ran uh, security for Fozzy, uh, which we talked about being relocated from St. Andrews over to Diesel. Uh, take us through the last couple of weeks. It, you know, it's been pretty busy. Uh, our power main show was on Tuesday. <clears throat> it went fucking spectacular. You know, I haven't seen power main before and I only knew like two songs, but fucking guys are hyped, man. So how was the turnout? Cause you, on a Tuesday, it was, uh, it was a, there was a decent turnout. Like, I mean, what are we talking? Let's, let's get on the I mean, brass tacks. I'd say probably 250. Okay. So for a Tuesday, that's Tuesday. actually really good, you know, because Power Man's, you know, a band that, did they ever have like any huge mainstream hits or are they kind of like more underground, kind of like. They had the World Collide song. That's really the only one I remember on the radio. Something that was probably 25 years old. 90s. Or yeah, no. yeah, yeah. So twenty five years, twenty five, thirty years old. Because mm -hmm. Nikki loves Power Man Five Thousand, and it's like I'm listening to. Him, I'm like, I don't recognize any of these fucking songs. I saw him play once at like uh, 
uh, like a festival or something like that. I'm like, well, they're a good band. I just don't know any of the songs. So I was kind of curious on what their draw would be on a Tuesday. Right. So two, that's not, that's really, I've seen uh, touring bands come through on weekdays with bigger songs with less people in that. So, I mean, it wasn't like Fozzy on Thursday though, but it was, it was, it was good. It was still. So how was that one? The Fozzy one, because that was like a last minute thing, you know, like the week before it, it got moved over to diesel. So, mm -hmm. uh, from Detroit and Detroit right. to diesel, that's a big difference in, uh, that's 45 minute drive, right. you know? So how, how was that Fozzy show as far as, you know, the bands take us through that? It was a great show. Uh, there was one local band they put on the lounge. <clears throat> they were decent, but um, who was the local band? Do you remember? I know you're running security, so I, you probably I didn't get to see. Don't remember the local band's name. I could probably um, do something working. For and them. I really didn't get to watch them because they were supposed to play at six, mm -hmm. and they didn't end up playing till like nine. But they played. Um, what the hell happened there? I don't know, but they played at about nine o'clock. I'm guessing and. And it was while the other bands were, the, the Bion bands for Fozzy were playing. So it was kind of the same. I was up front at the stage for Fozzy, so I, I didn't get a chance to catch him. Right. You know, the, the local. So there were two other bands uh, that came on with Fozzy. Like the... Three. Three? Yeah. So Fozzy bought, brought three ba they, bands? Yeah, they brought, I do believe it was three. I don't remember the first band, but the second band was... Uh, um, was it G... Ka uh, Ka what were we just talking about? GHB or something like that? No, GFM. That GFM. was the band that came on right before Fozzy. Oh, God. But, uh, do some homework. It was... Uh, Ka uh, we were just talking about that band from Cali. Oh, Crash Karma. Crash Karma. Oh, yeah. my God. Phenomenal dude. band. Talk about a phenomenal, phenomenal two-piece band. band. Yeah. With a chick drummer hot as hell that was fucking crazy, bro. They yeah. came out in the beginning, ran through the crowd playing drums and fucking on the megaphone Got up on stage. The chick was like, had this riser where she could stand on top of it. And oh, shit. She'd play her drums, jump up on that thing, say some shit, jump back. They were fucking wow. amazing, dude. They were amazing. Amazing. So I'm assuming two two people, and, and if memory serves me correct, they're kind of like a hard rock metal kind of band. Yeah. Uh, so I'm assuming backing tracks. A lot of backing tracks. Okay. Most of the bands that played there were backing tracks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'm, I, I'm trying to remember. It's been a long time. Guitar player, drummer. Yep. Okay. So so they freaking killed it. So it was like the like the focus of the show, obviously, on the hot jig drummer. And then the, <laughs> then, then the dude's kind of just sitting in the back like, well, I guess I could play guitar. Um, yeah, he was, he was pretty hyped too, though, man. You know, he had, he had the great stage presence with the long ass dreads. I think maybe from Australia or somewhere he looked like he was from, but he yeah. was like the guitar player singer. She was the drummer singer. They were great, man. Like they were fucking great. Okay. So Crash <laughs> Karma, check them out. It's all K's, K-R-A-S-H-K-A-R-M-A, yep. I believe. And the second band, GH, whatever. Uh, what GFM. It? GFM. I from, was uh, GHB. North Carolina. Okay. Three-piece band, young chicks, hot chicks, in cheerleading outfits, mm -hmm. fucking screaming, the hype as hell, back and forth, standing on these little boxes they had made. They were awesome, man. They were great. Okay, and then the main <laughs> attraction, Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho. How was how does that? You know, I grew up watching WCW way back in the early early nineties. Yeah. When when Jericho first came yeah. through. So it was great to see this guy on stage singing. He was great, man. Like I was blown away. Yeah. First time hearing him. Excellent. And they're like. Uh, they don't seem like the kind of band that you would be into because you're uh, me knowing you're into the harder stuff. To, uh, maybe the couple songs I heard from Fozzy, they're more like a <sighs> Motley Crue esque rock band, you know, where it's heavy, but there's no, ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, yep, it's yep. a lot of like, ah, you yep, know, yeah. Jericho gets that voice from the tight spandex he wore for 30 <laughs> fucking years, you know? So, it, right. so was their whole set kind of like that kind of like, throwback kind of 80s rock without being like crappy yeah, glam yeah a little bit um, okay it was a little bit harder i would say um he did do some screams though like you know and i'm not saying screams maybe yells yeah but they sounded good like yeah. he was good he was good he was yeah. key you know um 
great. It was great. He was great to the crowd. That guy is a genuine dude, man. So was he, you know, because you were there, because you were running security and all that, so obviously you were there all night. Was he the kind of guy that would, after the show, hang out by the merch and shake hands and all that, or was he kind of like the big pompous rock star? He's like, I'm going out to the bus. Fuck you guys. No, he was, okay, he had his VIP yeah. before. Okay. So they came in first. They got to watch him sound check. You know, they got to sign their autographs and this and that, this and that. Um, the band came back to the merch. He didn't. He went back to the bus. Nobody want to talk to those guys, though. right? So, but you know, there's uh, he does. Chris Jericho does a lot of things for disability people. You know, people with disabilities and stuff. Mm -hmm. So there was a guy that's been around Diesel for quite a few years. Um, sick. Yeah. You know, not going to be here with us much longer. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Chris came back out and, you know, after everybody left and, you know, done the pictures with him and autographs. And okay. All that. So, so he wasn't like King Douche. He's no. like, fuck all y'all. I'm going on my bus and do some blow and no. bang some whores. Honestly, he went back to the bus, probably grabbed a shower because he came back. You know, he was clean, clean, <laughs> you know. And so, yeah, I mean, no, that guy was, a, he's a great dude, man. He's a real nice dude. Did you get a chance to talk to him at all? Or I didn't get a chance to talk to him. Uh, just out by the bus, you know, yeah. like fist bump and stuff. That's about yeah. it, you know. Oh, very, was it a hard fist bump? Like, could you tell he was, uh, <laughs> no, were you like brothers and muscles and guns? <laughs> he's not as big as me, bro. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, how, like, I mean, he's nice and ripped, he's got some abs and shit, but he's like, not like some beast. Well, he's, this, this is like a thing because it's like I've met some people that have played on huge stages and all this. Mm -hmm. You know, I posted a picture of DJ Ashba, he used to be in Guns N' Roses. When I when I saw him play, it looked like he was like seven feet tall. And then I met the guy, and he's like five foot six, and like <laughs> right. a little string bean little dude. Right. So was Jericho kind of that? And also, you see Jericho on like WWF and all this, right. and he's all big, and you know they get the camera angles to make him look huge. How like is he? Is he a short dude or? I'd say he's a. Uh... 5'10", maybe? Okay, so about my... Maybe six foot at the most? So about normal height. I mean, to me, I mean, if I would have guessed, he was probably like maybe 205. Okay. Two, you know? So not not like uh, Larry Smith, like... He's not 220. No. He, he, ain't, he ain't got the guns like <laughs> I mean, like he's it. got some guns, you yeah. know, but he's... Did you want to, like, be like, yo, bro, let's... Uh, yo, bro, come let's, over here, let me, let's let me open put the, you in, like... Uh, let's, open the, let's open the gun show, <laughs> and let's see what you got. Hey, I would have, I, I, yeah, I would have. <laughs> hey man, put him in a torture rack or something, you know. <laughs> Be like, dude, I need a job. Can I? Can you get me like, a job? Can what you, you gonna do? <laughs> oh, you're gonna. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you. Were you gonna? Would you have asked him to be like, "Hey, can you get me in touch with Vince and see if you, I can get a job?" This band thing, you know, I'm tired of playing Diesel all the time. I know you love it. You get paid shit tons no, of money. No, I was like, "Hey, man, like, how about you use our get some for your stage entrance?" <laughs> There's money in that, like sick retarded money. I know in that. Like I've heard, like, uh, oh god, whose intro was it? They uh, Motorhead. Um, you want to play the game? Oh, oh obviously yeah, the game. The Triple H. Yeah, trip. And uh, Lemmy did. Uh, it was years ago. I don't know if I could even find it, but you know they talked to Lemmy. They're like, because everybody goes Ace of Spades with Lemmy, mm -hmm. you know, in Motorhead. And he's like, you know, actually our biggest song was the one we had for you know the game and all, the WWF. And if you look on Spotify, you know. The game has more streams than Ace of Spades. Wow. You know, so that that song that, you know, he wrote specifically for Triple H, that's his name, right? Triple yep. H, you know, is the most streamed Motorhead song, you know, on Spotify. And they made millions on wow. the game. You know, so I'm like, so I'm like, yeah, if you can get get some on there, you, you'll be retired and uh, out on the road playing in front of. <laughs> hundreds of people just play that song over and over and over right so that's that's like i did uh, when i was with uh new day we did uh a wrestling song i have it on here somewhere it's completely horrible and it's complete garbage but we <laughs> we wrote an intro intro music for uh actually let's see if i can find it real quick I, I i don't think i i 
God, it's so horrible. I don't even know if I'd want to play it. But we wrote a, oh, I do have it. You want to hear it? <laughs> Let's hear it. You want to hear it? Okay, so when I was in New Day, we wrote, uh, I can't even remember who the wrestler's name was, but we wrote a song and recorded it, and they paid for us to record it, and I think he used it for about a year. Uh, it's called The Great Adventure. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're going to play this real quick and then we'll get back to this when Ricky <laughs> was in a band who did it wrestling intro music. So here, here it is. Uh, don't laugh at me too hard. Uh, you flip this. Uh, don't mind the echo. We don't need to listen to any more of that. But that, <laughs> that was my one foray into doing a wrestling <laughs> intro thing. And it's it's because it was like one of those, um, you know, how they have, uh, they used to have Matt Hot Rock and shit like that, yep. like that kind of brand of wrestlers. So it's like not getting paid anything. But I went to one and it was like, uh, God, it was like this tag team, like two dudes who like slap in and out and all this like mm -hmm. gay slapping and then they like wearing <laughs> speedos and uh it was a whole thing and hearing them come out and they have like the crappy strobes and all this and <laughs> that song playing and then all these like uh i'll say it like fucking rednecks like <laughs> yeah, dude that's fucking killer you know, you know a whole different brand of people a whole right. different <laughs> demographic <laughs> of human being and it's like well, that's my song. I don't know whether to be stoked or kind of like, well, at least the rednecks like it. <laughs> you know, so I, I think we played it once and then he used it for probably about six months or a year. And he's like, yeah, I don't use it anymore. So I'm like, well, well that was fun. Right. So, <laughs> hey. uh, so, yeah. Okay. So we talked about Fozzie. We talked about Power Man. Uh, talk, oh, I got to talk about this. Uh, went out, uh, like I said, the. did you have anything else to add on the Power Man thing? No, no. Okay. Well, yeah. I know you guys played it. Power was great. Okay. <laughs> how how was your show, Fallen Stronger? How how'd the show go? It went great. That's great, awesome. Great sound. You know, they they changed some speakers up in the diesel there and uh, gave us some drum monitors this time. So <laughs> it was uh, it was a stellar show, man. A shout out to everybody at Diesel. <laughs> uh, so yeah, went out to uh, the Token Lounge, which to me, you know, it's it's a long hike from Chesterfield. It's, it's it takes about an hour to get out there. Uh, it's on the west side of the D Detroit suburbs, and where I live is the northeast corner of the Detroit suburbs. <laughs> right. uh, so I went out to check out Paralandra and the Many Colored Death, who uh, Steve Engel might remember. We've had them on the show. Uh, this show a couple times and uh, I, I wanted to go check him out. So, you know, like we were talking about with uh, Jess and the nuts and bolts, you got to do the FaceTime, right. you know, and went out and saw them, uh, Tim and, and Kate from uh, Fatal Conceit. They came out too with their, their gang of, 
fans and friends and all that. So there were a bunch of people out there. Uh, Sherry Sleep was out there as well. Uh, a bunch of people, Jess and 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 her wife uh, Christine were out there. And uh, super cool to see a lot of the West Side people. And for those of you on the West Side, Casting Shadows will be playing the Token Lounge this Friday uh, with Gangway. We're going to be direct support for them. So super cool. If you want tickets, hit me up. And uh, I might just give them to you because I don't like selling tickets. So I'm just like, <laughs> fuck it. If you want to go, just let me know and I'll leave a ticket for you at the door. Yeah, yeah. Um, so out there, checked out Paralandra and Mini Color Death that uh, we play at the top of the show. Uh, phenomenal, uh, many colored death, uh, three piece, uh, kind of like a hard rock version of the punk stuff that was big in like the early two thousands. You know, I don't want to say pop punk because it wasn't pop punk, but it wasn't like Fugazi punk rock, you know, hardcore punk. It was, Mm -hmm. it was like that in between of hardcore punk and pop punk, right. You know, kind of more along the line, maybe like old school green day maybe i'd say you know okay. pre dookie <laughs> back okay. when the, back when they were like a legit <laughs> punk band right right you right. know uh and then paralandra phenomenal band you know the big thing right now is female fronted rock bands you know the hailstorm and the pretty reckless they're yeah. fucking huge uh paralandra cassandra carson we've talked to her like i said talked to her on the show a couple times and that girl can like the first time i saw Paral. remember uh dirt fest Yes. Uh, when they had it in Pontiac, mm-hmm. I was, uh, I was, God, I don't, I think I was at uh, Raw Radio, doing Raw Radio X at the time. So I had all these interviews scheduled. And me and my buddy, CJ, who was my co host, uh, we're running around doing all these interviews, you know. And so I'm cutting through this stage, you know, one of the side stages at like 3 p.m. or something like that. And I hear this like sick, ridiculous rock and roll, like, guitar solo like slash kind of shit mm. and i turn around and it's paralandra playing this small little stage and uh the singer just ripping guitar solos and she's hot as shit right. you know wearing like spandex and everything's right showing that <laughs> hanging be out? Show- <laughs> not hanging out but it, it was it was wanting looking, to hang out it was looking good <laughs> you know so i'm like okay well and i had like two interviews i had to do i'm like all right cj those two bands can fuck themselves. <laughs> We're not doing them. I'm going to watch this band and watch Paralandra play. And, uh, you know, her dad is actually the lead lead guitar player, the other lead guitar player. And he looks like he's all of your age. Really? He looks like he's like, or my, you know, he looks like he's like 42, 40, somewhere in there. Not 50s. Right. You know, because I'm assuming that Cassandra is in her 30s or something like that. So I'm assuming he's probably in his 50s and uh, just freaking killed it, you know. And, you know, right after that, I became a huge fan of Paralandra and uh, they're out of Springfield, Missouri. So if you're out there, check them out. Uh, or even if you're not, check them out. Phenomenal band. And, uh, you know, didn't get a chance to talk to them because they had like everybody that was there was there to see Paralandra. So after they played, they had the cluster fuck of people. Right. But I got to talk to uh, a couple of people from the many colored death and like, Oh my God, are you, are you the guy that we did the radio show with out from out here? I'm like, yeah, that's me. Like, Oh, it's so cool for you to actually come out and see us because normally we do these interviews and we never hear from the guy again. And he never comes see, to see us or anything like that. It's right. cool that you actually did. So it was a, su- it was a super cool, super cool show. And there were a lot of people there, which is really cool for, you know, two bands that are, local independent bands um, to get as much people out there as, right. as they did. So it was super cool. And then the day after that, uh went out to Florida with the family. Uh, it was something that I've been wanting. It, it costs a metric train, a metric shit ton of money to take a family to Disney world for a week. Hell yeah. Ugh. So <laughs> everything went cool. You know, the week was fine. It was me, Nikki, the two kids, uh, my sister, her husband, their two kids, and my mom. So we got to like this bitch in Airbnb. You know, fucking crazy. I had like a hot tub, a pool, and they had like eight bedrooms and five bathrooms. And wow. It was like a half million dollar house. So, you know, I'd go do the Disney crap. It's like 90 degrees. And I'd be in a 
train wreck of pain and then at the end i'd pour myself a drink sit in the fucking hot tub for a couple hours and be <laughs> it like, all goes away <laughs> kids go to bed and daddy needs his alone time you know so it was super cool and there were there were some drama trips in there with uh me and my sister's husband who i sometimes don't get along with too well right uh program director at npr that's what he does oh. and uh so uh, I guess the big thing that happened was, you know, we were supposed to come home on Friday. Spirit Airlines. I know they're a budget, and <laughs> I was looking to penny pinch anywhere I could. So I'm like, Spirit Airlines, it'll be good enough. You know, it's only a two and a half hour flight. So we got down there fine and coming back. So our flight was supposed to leave Friday at 5 p.m. And my sister's flight was leaving at 3 uh, cause they got different flights cause they were cheaper and, uh, her flight gets canceled. They tell her at about five o'clock flight's been canceled and, uh, they gave her a refund and, uh, they, they got a car and they were going to, you know, spend a couple extra days down and then slowly make their way back. Ours five o'clock, you know, we get to the airport, we're there and everything's fine. They even put us on the fucking plane. You oh, know, wow. it was a little delayed. You know, we didn't get on the plane until probably about six thirty, seven o'clock. So I'm, I'm like, fine, it's Spirit Airlines. I'm not expecting a, 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 a phenomenal production here. Right. So we get on there. I'm like, okay, get on at seven. It means we'll be home by 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Not bad. So they put us on the plane. We're sitting there for an hour. And the pilot comes over the PA a couple of times. Hey, we're short of. Uh, a crew member or something like this. We can't take, we can't go. We're trying to find somebody to come in and do this sort of like, okay, well it's, I'm expecting them to have people working for them, you know? So sure. There's gotta be somebody in this airport that can hop on a two and a half hour flight to Detroit. No, no, no. So about seven 30 rolls around. They're like, okay, well we're going to deplane you, take you off the plane, go sit in the lounge or in the airport again. And we'll see if we can remedy this situation and find somebody. So we're sitting out there, you know, in the terminal, I guess, whatever it is for about two more hours sitting out there waiting. And then they come over to the speaker. All right. Your flight's been canceled. Go over to the ticket desk for your refund or whatever. So we're like, okay, well it's nine o'clock. Maybe they'll have, you know, a late flight, you know, 10 30, 11 o'clock. Because I know sometimes, you know, after 10 30 11 they're not doing any more flights so I'm like maybe they'll be you know it'll be a shit show maybe it'll be something where they'll take us to cleveland and then cleveland flies home so we go up to the 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 ticket thing you know which we had orlando's airport is fucking stupid horribly put together it's like three different buildings and you got to take a tram to each one. Oh fuck so it's like where you uh, check in security and all that is one building then you got to take a tram across the swamp to the terminal And there's like two terminals. So let me rewind. First, we were at one gate and one terminal. They're like, okay, you've been moved to this other gate. So you have to take a terminal all the way back to the main thing, take another or a tram from the one terminal all the way back, then take another tram to the new one. And we're running because they gave us like 20 minutes to do this. And all this goes down. So they're like, okay, flight's been canceled. So we go to the ticket thing like, okay, well, if we have to stay another day, not a huge deal. You know, if it's something early tomorrow, we'll just stay at the airport. So we go up to the ticket thing and like, okay, what are our options? What can we do here? Well, we can fly you out on Tuesday. (laughs) I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? What the hell am I going to do for three more days in Florida? I can't afford to stay here for three more days. I have to go to work on Monday. You know, so that would involve us staying uh, Saturday. Sunday, Monday, and then flat on Tuesday. Wow. I'm like, yeah, that's not going to happen. They're like, well, we can refund you your money and you could find another way to get home. And this is Orlando, Florida. And I'm like, I know this is like a 16 hour drive. So I'm talking it over with everybody. I'm like, fuck it. Let's just, let's just drive. You know, I've done the drive to Kentucky and all this and Nashville, eight, nine hour drives. I'm like, it'll be fine. It'll suck, but whatever. So we had to go find and every, everybody on that plane, obviously is going back to Detroit. All right. Nobody, everybody had to go back to work on Monday. So line at the rental car place was fucking bonkers. 
you know, everybody trying to find a one way car rental that we just drop off up here. So I'm in line for probably about three hours to get a rental car. So I get a rental car and it's about one 30 in the morning. And I'm like, okay, we, we have no place to stay or anything like this. So we're like, we're just going to drive. And once I get out into the stick somewhere, you know, out of Orlando, let's find like a roadside hotel for like 60 bucks, crash there for a few hours and keep driving. Mm -hmm. So I get the car and we start driving. I have Nikki. I'm like, Hey, go find as I'm driving, try to find hotels, try to find us something where we can stay. Right. And I'll just keep driving until we do. So I'm driving and I head out over 75 because 75 cuts right through, you yeah. know, Florida all the way up. So I'm like 75 best bet. I'll, I won't get lost. So I get over, I'm over at by 75, about an hour and a half away from Orlando. She's like, I can't find anything. Everything's sold out. So I'm like, okay, you know, so I'm driving down 75. I get out of uh, Metro Orlando out into the fucking sticks in the redneck hood of Florida. Right. And I'm pulling off at every single stop that has lodging. You know, they'll have two or three hotels and I'm, I'll go in two o'clock morning. I'm like, I just need a place to sleep for like four hours and we'll, we'll be out of here. You know, and they're like, we're sold out. Ugh, we're sold out, you know, redneck shit. Mm-hmm. And so we're like, I'm fucking exhausted. You know, I've been up since 7 a.m. So I have my wife, an eight year old and eight month old in this car. Eventually I can't drive anymore. So I'm like. Oh, this this sucks, but we pulled off into like a McDonald's parking lot and crashed. Mm-hmm. And I and I rented a Buick Enclave, which is like a mid sized SUV. My ass trying to sleep in that was fucking <laughs> shit. So uh, got a couple hours of decent sleep, and then that takes us into Saturday. So I'm like, okay, Nikki, get back on the tip. Try find another hotel. I need a, like a legit nap. I need a shower. Because I haven't showered in a day and a half. So she's on the thing and we couldn't find a place to stay until we hit Chattanooga, Tennessee. Wow. So it gets worse. So she finds this place. It's a micro tell uh, by Wyndham or whatever. So we're like, okay, it's fine. You know, all I need is a couple hours to rest and then we'll just go back out and hit it. And so we get to this micro hotel and, and Chattanooga is like uh Southwest Detroit. I found out it's all hood and shit. Uh-huh. So here I am, my wife, eight year old daughter and eight month old son. We, we walk into this place and there are just dudes smoking pot in the lounge. And we're the only white people there. And I'm like, this is fucking bonkers as shit because here I am with my wife and oh. eight year old and eight month old baby. Right. So I'm like, this will be fine. You know, I just need a couple hours sleep. I, I, and Nikki, she's like, I can't sleep here. There's stains on everything. And Mm. there's like the carpet sticky. And I'm like, I've slept in worse. You guys go do something. I I need a nap. I'm going to be doing all the driving away. So, you know, we check in about five, five o'clock that, that day. And then I sleep for about three hours and then I'm like, all right, fuck it. Let's just go. And so we drove from probably about 10 p.m. Uh, last night all the way until uh, 9, 9 a.m. today we got home. Wow. So that was 11 hours straight mm-hmm. from Chattanooga, Tennessee, all the way up here to Chesterfield. Uh, Nikki drove through Atlanta because I needed to take another nap. And then she drove uh, from the Michigan state line back up here. So pretty much everything else I drove. Mm -hmm. So got home, took a nice shower and took a nap. And here I am doing the show. (laughs) So a couple things we can learn from this spirit airlines fucking sucks. Chattanooga, Tennessee is Southwest Detroit. (laughs) Don't stay at micro tell and a fucking train wreck. (laughs) <laughs> so here I am. Uh, so, oh God, we are running way behind. So uh, going going back over into the chat, um, cohort of goofs, Jalen Johnson, hoodlums. I don't know that is. I'm here to troll. That is all oh, okay. Greg Martz, I was hanging at. He was hanging at the token in the '70s. That's super cool. 
uh spirit airlines okay Gal- okay galaxy cat aim under firewalls jericho okay okay so that, that's all uh the kids my daughter was fine the eight-year-old was she slept uh i know it's horribly illegal but she was in the front seat the entire way because <laughs> <laughs> nikki was in the back seat because you know the kid needs food and all this and diapers right. changed so she was in the back i'm like you get the ride up front so eight-year-old sitting in the front seat, totally not <laughs> illegal. And she, she fell asleep. And uh, so she was fine. Uh, Mason, he, he got sick. So he's still sick. He's sick upstairs right now, uh, being in a car seat for a day and a half straight. And right, uh, right. the weather changes and all that. Oh, yeah. So uh, it fucking sucked. So that's the thing. So we're going to get, we got a lot of stuff to get through. And we do have fatal conceit we got to talk to in the 8 o'clock hour. Uh, I'm not even going to go through upcoming shows. You can find those over at facebook.com slash rocks 100 and, uh, upcoming guests. I'll get to those at the end. We have our pumper done band of the week. We need to get to, and our beer of the week. And then we'll get, uh, Tim and Kate from uh, fatal conceit on the line and talk to them about all things fatal conceit. They're going to be opening up the 13th annual Ricky rocks birthday blog going on April 16th at Simon's after park in Allen park. Along, oh God, I don't have the list. Uh, along with Fallen Stronger, Cyadine, Casting Shadows, Crafting Conviction, and of course, Fatal Conceit. So this week's uh, Pump It or Dump It Band of the Week is uh, the band Gutterfire out of Brisbane, Australia. This is uh, the segment of the show where we give you guys an independent band that you might not have found out about otherwise and let you guys uh, vote whether they're cool or whether they suck. Head on over to Facebook.com slash Rocks 100. Find the Pump It or Dump Band of the Week uh, post and give it a thumbs up. If you dig it, give the angry face. If you don't like it, uh, if you're into bands like Caius, Red Fang, Machine Head and Sleep, you might dig these guys. They have uh, their new singles called chill off their, uh, album chill that came out in 2021 via wormhole death records, facebook.com slash gutter fire. Uh, info on these guys. Upbeat doom is a difficult term to use in a sentence, but it's the kind of enthusiastic punter description that Brisbane hard rock outfit gutter fire have in spades, given the diverse sonic beast they built on top of that foundation. Having kicked off as a band 2018 to a lightning fast rise in the local scene, even bigger 2019, they've survived the year that never happened, 2020, and sailed into 2021 with the release of their debut album, Chill, and have their sights set on the rest of the world as we know it. With six singles out to date, tours in the works, and a power Powerful desire to take this show to the people. 2022 is said to be their best year yet. Super cool. We're going to be checking out Chill. Uh, a couple weeks ago, our last Pump It or Dumb Band of the Week won the Chamber of Toronto, Ontario. Their song, Bills to Pay. Only got two votes, so you guys obviously didn't dig that one, so you'll never hear from them again. Uh, so we're going to play some Gutter Fire, their song, Chill. We're going to come back with Beer of the Week and then get Fatal Conceit on the tip. <sighs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back after this episode number 133 of the Ricky Rock Show right here on rocks100.com.
And we are back. Turn that off. All right. Yeah, we are back, and that is dripping. I'm. I was. I did the hardest pour of a beer ever. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that was uh, Gutterfire out of Brisbane, Australia, and their song "Chill." Uh, check them out. Facebook.com/slash Gutterfire. Check them out on Spotify. You can listen to their whole album "Chill." Uh, thank you to the guys at Wormhole Death Records for that one. We're going to move into our beer of the week. And I uh, got this one specifically for Larry. Uh, this is Bell's Brewery from the, their Eccentric Cafe and General Store, Comstock, Michigan. This is called Larry's Last. That's for Larry. Uh, it's a 10% ABV, zero IBU oatmeal stout. Picked this up for twenty three ninety nine for four 12-ounce bottles from B&B Beer and Wine, Chesterfield, Michigan. If you want to feel just fine, head on over to B&B Beer and Wine. Uh, quick description on this one. A nod to 35 years of innovation from Bell's Brewery founder Larry Bell. This Imperial Stout is also a personal thank you for the support both he and the brewery have received over the years. Brewed with oats and rye malt, it is it is roasty with chocolate and dark fruit aromas. It finishes soft and Balanced Beer Advocate got give this a 9.1 out of 10, ranked number 44 in Beer Advocate's ratings on oatmeal stouts. Uh, also, need to throw this up to he, you point out uh, during the break, Johnny Reinhardt. I don't know why your comments aren't coming out. You're not banned. I don't. I don't know what the hell happened. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Larry, have you tried this one yet? I saw you did like a little half pour. I did a little. Uh, <laughs> woo! I'm gonna try it now though. Oh, uh, here it is. Larry's not a beer guy. Oh, good morning. Holy bitter, bitter. Yeah? He's right about the chocolate. Maybe a little coffee taste, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you feel drinking beer out of, like, a, a douchey little glass? <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> it's beer. <laughs> All right. Well. So, so get into it. What do you, What do you think of this one? Uh, it's a little too bitter for me, honestly. Um, the flavor's not too bad, though. I mean, it's got a decent flavor to it. You know I me, mean? I'm not a beer guy anyway, so I'm always going to be skeptical on the beer situation. But um, As far as taste, what do you what do you get in there? I'm as I'm waiting for Tim and uh, Kate to get in on, the, uh, on the, the Zoom thing here, I sent them all the info. Yeah, it does got the chocolate hint. To me, a little coffee-ish hint a little bit. Um, it's bitter. I mean... Nah. Nah. Scale 1 to 10, what are you thinking? Me? <laughs> I mean, uh, this one would be a hard one for me to maybe even sip on, only because it's it's a little too... It's a little just a little bit too bitter for me. Other than that, I... You know, I mean, the flavor... The flavor's there. I mean, it says what it says. So what do you think of scale 1 to 10? I mean, I'd say a 9, you know. A 9? I, I mean, a 9. I mean, I mean, the it's got decent flavor. It's just yeah. it's just like uh, the bitterness for me. Just That's that's only my downfall is the bitterness. All right, so you're going to go a 9? Yeah, it's not bad. Oh, I mean, okay. It's potent. So you're you're digging the taste of it, just I not the, the bitterness. I dig the taste, just not the bitterness, yeah. Okay, let me let me take another sip of this here. Mm. Yeah, this is uh if you've ever had an oatmeal stout before, this is pretty much right up the middle of what you're getting from an oatmeal stout. Uh I don't know what makes it oatmeal, whether they uh hop it with with oats, obviously they do, but um Yeah, you're getting a, you do taste the chocolate in there, you do get a little bit of that uh uh fruity kind of taste. Uh, if you smell it, you get a lot more of that fruity taste than the chocolate. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it is what it says it is. Um, you know, oatmeal stouts are, are a hit or miss with me. Either, you know, they're like IPAs with me. You know, they tend to pretty much taste the same uh, after you've had one or 50 of, you know, they, they pretty much taste the same. Uh, this one, you know, the balance, you know, it's a smooth, it's smooth, you know, uh, it's not it's not leaving your mouth dry or anything like that. Um, it's a, it's a, it's it's a smooth beer. the The balance in in the chocolate and the fruit, 
uh, is pretty even. You know, you're tasting both those notes very evenly. Um, I kind of wish they'd kind of pick a direction and go with it. It seems like they wanted to do chocolate and fruit and didn't know which way to go. So they just did both, you know, equally. Um, I would have liked to, you know, with the, the taste profile of this thing and, uh, and the smoothness and all that, uh, I think if they would have went the fruit route with it, this would be a very, a very good oatmeal stout. I'm going to go, uh, I'm just going to go right up, right up the middle with a 7.5 on it. You know, it's, uh, it just seems like they didn't have a direction they wanted to go with it. They wanted to get something out for, for Larry Bell, you know, the guy on the, the package, who's the founder of Bell's Brewery and all that. Uh, they wanted to get something out for him. They did, really didn't have a direction they wanted to go with it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's a little pricey, you know, twenty three ninety nine for four for bottles of it. Uh, but if you're a baller and you see it, you know, you're not going to be it's not a letdown. I mean, it's a, it's an oatmeal stout. It's an imperial oatmeal stout. Right. That's what it is. And you're getting 10% ABV out of this thing. So if you got this thing to yourself and you can, you know, you go through the, the, the four pack of it, you'll be feeling, you'll be feeling like uh, a show promoter friend of ours and uh, <laughs> got it, you know, and you'll be, you'll be doing fine. Just don't get angry and pissed. Um, I have a feeling that if you threw up after this, it, it wouldn't, It'd probably, it'd probably taste good coming back up if you threw up, but, uh, so it's a thing. It's, 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 it's a good beer. It's right up the middle. You know, the price point's a little high on it. I'm thinking it's a little high because yeah. this is a special run. It's not something they've made for mass, uh, consumption. It's kind of just, you know, it, and I kind of like getting beers like that, that aren't the ones that you can find anywhere that are the short runs, you know, something they're doing for a special occasion or something like that, because usually you'll get a, uh, kind of an experimental beer. This isn't that. This this is pretty much right up the middle uh oatmeal stout. But it's, it, if you're in oatmeal stouts, you'll like it. And oatmeal stouts typically cost a little more anyway. So, it's a thing. Are they all dark? Yeah. Stouts okay. stouts are all all going to be dark. They're going to be uh uh thick, you know, they're, they're thick and you know, you like whiskey, right? No, no, you don't like whiskey. I, a, I mean, I could do some firejack every now and yeah. then, but because uh, as I say, if you're into whiskey, you know, stouts are something that you might be into because they have stouts that are brewed out of uh, bourbon barrels. Mm. So you'll kind of get the it'll, you know, depending on the range of it, you know, you could either get the slight taste of bourbon or a beer that tastes exactly like bourbon. And it, you know, I've had forty dollars stouts for like one glass like this. Ooh that was aged in like uh, Jack Daniels barrels for 15 years, oh, wow. you know, and it tastes like Jack Daniels to the point where it take me an hour to drink this. Cause it's like 35% alcohol, right. <laughs> you right. know? So stouts, you know, typically you get a lot more uh, variants, you know, a lot more different tastes and stuff like that. Oatmeal stouts, you're narrowing your, uh, narrowing your taste profile, but stouts, you know, I, I get, I, I like stouts, you know, uh, except when you drink too much of them and you throw up, then it's just a bad time. The hangovers are horrid, oh, you know, because all the sugar and all that crap. Uh, so that's a thing. Um, uh, let me go back over to the chat here, see what's going on here. Uh, so, yeah, that's this week's Beer of the Week. Uh, Bell's Brewery from their eccentric cafe and general store out of Comstock, Michigan. Larry's last. Uh, Larry gave it a 9. I gave it a 7.5. Beer Advocate gave it a 9.1. Ranked number 44. If you want to give it a shot, head on all the way out here to Chesterfield. B&B Beer and Wine. Uh, you'll feel just fine. They have an all awesome selection of uh, liquor. A uh, couple aisles of it. They have a couple free uh, refrigerators full of craft beer, and that's where I go for all of my personal alcoholism needs. So super cool. Uh, heading over to the chat. Katie kicks is okay. So oh, I got to go way up here. Uh, they made it. Okay, so they're on there. Uh, so we're gonna play the music video for these guys at the end of the interview because we're uh, way over. Uh, so we're going to switch over to this and see if we can't get Katie and Tim from, uh, from fatal conceit on here. Let me turn this on, turn this on, see how lucky we get. Let's see if we can get them. Dun, dun, dun. 
I told him to sit very close. Usually I talk to one person. All right, we got video. Ooh. Oh, you're, oh, you guys are going to have to, can you, oh, this is going to look horrible. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Oh. Mic check. That. Oh, man, this is, okay, I, I got it. Okay, so you guys introduce yourselves. <laughs> I'm going to work on this, uh, this picture here. All right, introduce yourselves real Loud quick. Loud and clear. All right, I got I to gotta work on this. Uh, so introduce yourselves out there while I'm working on trying to get this, uh, get this thing. Hello friends. We are fatal conceit. I am, t <laughs> uh, wait, hold on. Let me turn the, turn the camera. There's Where am I? There's a huge delay. There's a massive delay. Hello friends. Am I even in the middle? I can't read. Yeah, no, I'm going to try, try getting you guys. Usually we do this with one person and they're like, no, we're going to do two. So I'm like, this throws everything <laughs> out the window on how I, how I do this thing. <laughs> Like All right. Davey 504 video. <laughs> OMG. <laughs> it, uh, you ever watch Davey 504? No. The bass player's like, can you play the bass? Like, I play the bass. <laughs> that has too many strings. You cannot play the bass. <laughs> All right. So we got Tim and Kate. I'm going to work on work on this feverishly to try to get all this to fit. Uh <laughs> <laughs> the, talk, talk about the band real quick while I'm trying to get this all worked out. All right, all right, all right, all right. So we are Fatal Conceits, comprised of the glorious Katie Kicks Puga, Joe, Pizza Joe Blake, James, the God of Thunder, Belina, and yours truly, Tim, Timothy David. I'm somewhere in the middle of this logo happening here. Hi, friends. Um, we, gosh, we found it in 2020 with a completely different lineup and, you know, the years pass, time passes and, uh, we are who we are now. Um, we, uh, I think you're just gonna have to move the camera unless you guys want to get very close. <laughs> are we doing it? Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get so you can see it. You gotta get even closer than that. You guys gotta like pretend you know each other. We know each other. God, this is, this is fantastic. Yeah, this this is great radio. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say except you're welcome? Okay, so <laughs> I don't even know where to go. <laughs> what is happening? We we brought in the green screen. We're all stoked. I was like, we're gonna go like sixteen by nine or whatever the ratio is supposed to be. Okay, so right now, Tim, we got you on there, and uh, you're All nice right. and centered. Uh, so just come closer, Katie. I'll bring your RE20 over here. Hers is the better microphone. Can, can, can you see her? Uh, I got to work on it some more, but I'll, I'll try getting it in there. God, this is horrible. All right, so. <laughs> oh, we are the worst guests ever. I know. <laughs> you guys are. I'm supposed to agree with that one. <laughs> yeah. All right. I can't hear you over how bad this is going. All right, so take, take me through the start of this band, because when I first met you guys, you two, uh, Kate was the singer, and Tim, you were playing guitar uh, for Galaxy Cat. You know, I came out, right. came out for uh, Kyle Michalajic had hired me to come out. And uh, MC the show over at the Token Lounge. I remember it very well. And I remember, you know, this is my one memory from that show. Was it was before you guys went on. I think it was you, Tim. You were like, can you talk to Kate? She's super nervous. And I don't know. She doesn't know if she can do it. So I had to give like a pep talk on the side of the stage, you know, mere minutes before Galaxy Cat was going to go on and give a pep talk to get get her out there. <laughs> now, I don't know what I said, but she ended up going out there and they killed it. So, Gal take us through the Galaxy Cat. Take us through that, the the first band where I met you two. Oh man, do you mind if I take take this one? If you want to. Yeah, okay, that wasn't so, even really like the first thing that started. That was kind of like a little side thing. But, so, yeah. At the time, there were two projects, and I wanted to do a cover thing, and Katie wanted to do some stuff, so we threw together this Galaxy Cat thing, and it ended up being just a really big deal, a really memorable project that a lot of people, like, people still come up to Katie and go, hey, Galaxy Cat, that, that was you, right? So um, that, that night that I had asked you to come over there and give her a pep talk, um, 
my band at the time, Extremis, which I'm wearing a Ghidorah shirt. Hayden was my bassist then that night. We uh, uh, we played a, a set and then Galaxy Cat finished and it was it was excellent. That was a great night. We had a great party. It was awesome. So Galaxy Cat was like the cover project that we were doing at the same time. Uh, we ended up opening for uh, Dan- Danny Warsnop mm-hmm. of Asking mm-hmm. Alexandria. That was our, our last show with that band. Uh, so that was like, Galaxy Cat was this. And then COVID hit, pretty much. <laughs> and then it was right 2020. And then 2020 happened. So 2020, yeah. what led to the end of Galaxy Cat? 2020. That was it. So that People was it. The rest, us. the rest of the band was just like, "Yo, dog, this this ain't gonna fucking go," you know. And everybody else just kind of quit. Yeah, well, folks uh, went their own way. Yeah. You know, Hunter was the drummer, and Jalen played guitar with us, and they're in the half of it. And you know, uh, Hayden and I, we were an extremist at the time, and uh, we were really gung ho about it. And uh, we just kind of had to do our own thing through the pandemic. Okay, so that band ends. And where along the line do you somehow convince a lead singer to become a bass player? Ha, that's kind of a funny story. <laughs> that's a great so story. actually goes <laughs> even farther back than that to like when Tim and I had first met. I was just working as a receptionist at the college that I had attended. And he was like, I suck at social media. I need help with social media. And I was like, oh, well, I, I can help you out. No big deal. Like, I'll help you promote your band. I'll help you make flyers and I'm stuff. I'm like, yes. And this was back when. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. This band was called Vox at Nil. That's where this whole thing started. And they did a show with We Came as Romans at the Crowfoot. It was kind of like the first big thing. I ended up selling 70 tickets by myself oh, she's to being that modest. show. The, the Vernon room was shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> like. And it was like, I had brought a couple people there, and um, Approaching Autumn's uh, drummer, uh, Josh Miller, had a GoPro, uh, and he was, uh, he was filming us. It was, it was a party, and it was absolutely wild. Yeah, it, was it was bonkers. Great. It was great. So me, I'm all like, In the oh, chat, okay. they're saying, Katie, get closer to the mic. Get closer yeah. to the mic. Tim's got to get his big head out of the way. That's He's a singer. That's what happens. <laughs> Larry, you we know like the mic. <laughs> Turning the gain up. Yeah, so... <laughs> That's where it started. And then, you know, I was just kind of there in and out. I was managing the band a little bit. Everything kind of morphed into extremists. There was some personnel changes. And after that, everything morphed into Fatal Conceit. Um, I was actually at his parents' house when they were shooting the Taking Back the Name video. And shout out to Greg Martouche, my dad. (laughs) He let us use his shed. <laughs> something, um, something happened with the original bass player. He wasn't able to make it out for the video shoot. Um, so shout out to my little brother who went from Wixom all the way to Real Livonia OG. to get my bass and my like an outfit for me. He drove all the way out to Fenton where we were shooting the music video. And Tim was just like, hey, do you want to fill in? And so I ended up being in the music video. After that, he's like, do you want to just be in the band? Well, there was a little bit of stuff that happened between it. So Sean, who was doing some producing for the band, was like, dude, this like chick bassist thing is awesome. You should definitely you should, consider you it. You should roll with it. And that. I was like, wait, what? I have a bassist. And, you know, communication didn't end up working out. So like in the midst of all that sort of nebulousness, I was like, do you just want to do it? And she went, yes. Yes. So here we are. <laughs> And I, uh, I've never played a bass before in my life. I, I started really like practicing and learning in October of last year. So I've only been playing since last October. She now really. has more basses than I have instruments, like <laughs> period. So, I so I think what we learned I here, shop, what can I say? <laughs> so I think what we learned so far is I can take this back to nuts and bolts and our truths of Jess in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. Learn to play bass. It doesn't take that long. There you go. You can do it, <laughs> and you will make your band infinitely better because I guess we learned that female bass players are like a big thing and a big draw. Yeah. That's the goddamn truth, man. So, yeah. and I think I learned I need to have a sex change really fucking quick. <laughs> casting shells will go through. Baby. T- <laughs> casting will be huge next year if I and I can cash in on that trans thing. <laughs> Yeah, I, th- I think I got a thing going on. I'm going to get the wang chopped off. I'm gonna... All right, I'm leaving. <laughs> That's a big old... <laughs> okay. Yeah, Ghidorah's in the chat. Shout out to Ghidorah. So, okay, uh, so the the music video, uh, which we're going to play after the interview uh, for Taking Back the Name, a really cool, really cool video. And so 
Kate, you didn't at the time. Did you know how to play the song when you when no, you did? No, so it was freezing that day. It was Absolutely literally freezing. thirty-five degrees. My dad brought out a propane heater. It was nuts. So what ended up happening was I had owned a bass because I had some interest in learning how to play, but I hadn't done it yet. Hi, Kevin. I'm so excited to see you tomorrow. Kevin Wesley Williams. We, um, great. We're doing vocals too. So basically, Tim was like looking at me like I've never seen his eyes as wide open before. He's like, it's crunch time. And he's basically showing me how to play please, the parts. Please. And I'm doing my best to memorize everything in like 30 seconds before Justin started filming the video. So it was a little chaotic, but it was it was a lot of fun. And they, when they were like editing the video, obviously, because I'm not playing the bass in the video, fun fact. Um, they made it so you couldn't really tell that I Actually, wasn't playing the bass. <laughs> no, no one at the time was even in the band who was playing bass. Sean wasn't a member yet, and he played the bass part on that recording. Yeah, so it was it was a good time. It was a good time. It was wild. All right, it so was, taking oh, by the oh. name, Kate didn't know how to play bass. Fun fact, when I recorded the Falling Down music video, I had never played the song before. Hey, so and 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 Kevin go. Kevin Wesley Williams recorded that one too. Sound Shop, uh, hit them up. West Mix, West Mix, and uh, so moving forward. So uh, another thing I wanted to ask is in that video, you have a second singer, the guy who does that. No, it's time for that. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Sean, 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 Sean Pappy of Dead Wing Recordings. Okay, so was he in the band? Like. He was actually oh, yes. Okay, okay. So I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so take us to uh, you know it's when. Confusing. I know it's very confusing because I've seen <laughs> you guys live a couple times. I'm like I don't remember the guy doing the. <laughs> he, he, Sean lives in Florida. Florida. Well, the of the Sean lives in Florida, so it's it was hard. It was hard to to keep him on as the guitarist because it's just a lot of back and forth. Unhinged Florida man mm -hmm. joins Michigan band. It just, uh, it was wild. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, take us to the first, you know, you guys' very first show because you are, a, a you know, relatively new band, you know, COVID put a stop on galaxy cat. You guys come out, uh, you're I, looking at your uh, YouTube feed. You got a crap ton of subscribers, ca crap ton of views, and all this. No. Let's oh. let's let's go back to the, you know for for bands out there. Like even I looked at, I'm like, oh my god, this music video has like thirty thousand streams and stuff like that. You know, was that something that you know you guys? Uh, how do I want to say it? Kind of. Uh, Focused on more, you know, at the start of a band, you know, hey, we have to get social media numbers up for or else that we're going to make this video and 10 people are going to see it. Well, I mean, yes. And the the person who gave us that impetus actually is Hayden of Ghidorah. Shout out to Ghidorah in the chat. And he was he has this. Uh, it was like his thesis, man. It was if you get if you get the digital realm, the, everything else will follow, because if you get eyeballs, you're going to get the the, the return for it. Right. So. Uh, we connected with these cats uh, at Unleashed Music. You might, um, they've represented just a ton of bands, man. They're, uh, oh, I gotta get the middle. Uh, they've been with um, a Black Dunk Graffiti, Breaking Benjamin, um, they, 30 Seconds to Mars. They, they've been with tons of, tons of bands and they helped us promote Taking Back the Name. So we got some really nice media attention for it. We got a uh, placement and just a bunch of playlists and we got a, just a really a lot of love for this song and, you know, we wouldn't have been able to do it without those folks. So shout out to Hayden for the thesis and Unleashed Music for, for like helping us to get to that place. And when, when it came to the music video, the g making sure that it wasn't like, I don't know, just like too, too spicy. It was like a good performance video. I needed to make sure that the video quality was great. So I brought in my friend, Justin D of Broken Television Entertainment. You should check them out, Broken TV. They're great, Justin D. He brought out, gosh, it was like a crew of three people. And it, it was a great night. And uh, we did the 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 original shoot, took maybe three hours, maybe. And he was like, wow. set aside like six hours for us. Mm -hmm. And it was like three three hours, maybe. It was, it was awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, we ran through the song maybe 11 times. The whole time, I'm like dying of stress because uh, James, he couldn't get out of his shift that night. And he had to drive from Allen Park to Fenton. I don't know if you know where Fenton is. It's just Ooh, a mm -hmm. little bit south of Flint. 
so he shows up and he just rips the drums. I just, I couldn't get, couldn't get my, my boy Bruce there. And Katie just jumps in, does it. I had to bring my drum set up there oh too. Oh my gosh. Which, had a drum set. which was no small part. You know, some of our feedback on the video was like, there's this really diverse band and they're bringing this fantastic look, which was a brand new shed a shed that my dad had just per purchased at the end of 2019 that he hadn't filled yet. So he's like, you know, you could use the shed. And I'm like, may I pretty, pretty <laughs> please. I had five venues cancel on me. Adrian oh, college. Cancel. Oh it. my gosh. It was, yeah, we done it without I was going to cancel everything. I was going to cut the contract with unleashed. I was yeah. like, this isn't going to happen. And the dad's like, Hey, do you want to use the shed? I was like, yeah, dad, let's yeah. use the shed. And the other thing that we, kind of focused on with this music video was reaching out behind what just our local scene was. Mm -hmm. So Tim had a lot of success using social media parlor and that's how we met um, one of our top fans, Fiona. That's how Fiona's we met the best. Her. And so we reached out parlor. to other states and really started to kind of promote, not just in our little local pool, but outside of that. And that's where a lot of the views for our stuff has come from. Dad, you don't sound like that. I just need to make sure they understand. I'm just a different person from you. We have the same voice. No, Parlor's been great to me. So there was this website that like got super just driven into the ground at the beginning of 2021 when that January 6th nonsense happened and this wonderful woman uh, named uh, Katie, uh, Katie McKay. She's just really great. Uh, she gave our band like the blue check mark that thing Twitter has. Oh. Um, they gave us the gold hmm. badge for it. That means you're legit. Also, that was nice. helpful. So, yeah, they've been really great to us. They've been giving us tons of promotion and love. And, you know, they, they like us because, you know, par I don't know if you've been to Parlor, but it's just like there is a weird culture of like toxic political stuff. So they're like, oh, you, you're not political th that much. So, yeah, you uh, don't really talk about politics. It's just well, kind of using, yeah. using the. Yeah, All right. So, there. so yeah. what, what is Parlor? Because I've kind of heard about it in passing. Is it's that like. A, free, a freedom of speech, social media. Like you're not censored for what mm -hmm. you say. So, a lot of people have jumped over there just to kind of, you know, say their truth or say like how they feel without being scared of being like. Scared. Larry, is this something that you're, you're on? Because no, Larry is kind but... of like that freedom of speech kind of guy. It sounds like I'm, something I want to be on. Yeah, I'm definitely team parlor. Like, like, no fact checkers. It's great. Yeah, it's good. So they, so, so it's pretty, is it like a Facebook kind of thing or is it like it's YouTube? It's a Twitter clone actually. Yeah. It, uh, it has a 480 character limit. Um, you follow people. It, it feels very much like Twitter, but when you hop on it, Unless you know who you're going to follow in advance, you get this kind of weird uh, political I environment in the those, feed. Yeah. So you got to jump on and find some folks you know. I know that uh, Kyle Mick is on there. Um, I know the uh, Detroit Troubles, Ray Khan is on there as well. You should follow them. I think he's Kid Lightning over there. You yeah. should check him out. Always follow your friends. <laughs> I think I think Sean Hellion's on that too. Oh geez, everybody is except me. I'm <laughs> I'm me. <laughs> I'm on Facebook, and I guess I have a Twitter and an Instagram. I I, I, I don't guess. even have a Twitter, bro. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you know, and another thing I want to ask, you know, with you know all the streams and all the you know everything you got for the video, ha have you seen that manifest itself into shows? You know, where you go play a show and you're like, hey, dude, I saw I saw this video on Parlor or I saw it on wherever, and you guys sound fucking killer, you know. And I and I saw you were playing and I had to come see you. You know, d have you gotten that kind of response? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we've gotten messages from people that have seen us on social media or have seen the videos. Um, it wasn't so we played that show. Um, where did we play that? I've got Simon stuck in my head now because we're about to play that show. Which one? But April sixteenth. That Simon's after dark now. Um, dark. Yeah, April sixteenth. <laughs> yes. It was the very first show we played. Um, the New Year show. Oh, 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 and a Parts and Labor. Parts in and Allen Labor. Park. Thank you. A great Thank place. You. That was a whole lot of fun. After we did that show, though. We and then we did the token show following that. We had like people who book show, we had booking agents like comment on us our Facebook page or like reach out to our DMs that wanting to book us for shows, which we yeah. thought was super cool. I was like, Oh my that god, that was totally awesome! Look at it, it's getting real. Yeah, and I even had uh, I sold a few tickets to some parlor peeps and that uh came to at least one of our token shows. The very yeah. first show we came to was actually during the thick of it in the pandemic. This was in the before times, the before Katie times. We played Strength Fest, 
Strength Fest at Token. It was uh, October of 2020. And it was this like groundbreaking thing that this band is doing this thing during the pandemic. It was nuts. And, um, you know, there was this hunger to come to the show. We, we very nearly sold out the venue. We, we sold so many tickets. It was, well, there were also eight bands and there was just a lot of hunger for live music at the time. But, uh, mm-hmm. You know, yeah, during that performance, so I had like six or seven people to say that they had come to come to see us because they saw us on on Parlor or mm-hmm. on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube. Mm-hmm. OK, so uh, for for bands out there, you know, mostly just for me and I'm sure Larry's kind of curious, too. You know, uh, how would how would you tell a new band, you know, that's looking to, you know, broaden their social media scape? and uh, get that kind of exposure like you guys have and have booking agents and promoters knocking down your door trying to get you guys to play. And how how would you tell a new band to get started with that? Do you want to take this one? I would just say networking. Like, you're not too good for your fans that go to your shows. And you never know, like, who your fans are connected to. So a lot of those times, you know, you just, you got to, You got to be nice. You can't just go to a venue, play the show and leave right afterwards. Stay to watch all of the other bands that are playing. It's, it's silly. I think it's silly when people, you know, jet right in, play their set and they jet right out. Like it was just a blip. It's like they weren't even there. So I just think it's important to, (laughs) to talk, to talk with the other bands, to network with those people and then hang out with your fans and everything. Yeah. Another really important element of this whole conversation is the product. You know, you have to really spend a lot of time making sure that the music that you're making is is worth the price you're asking. Their time, their 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 endorsement is not worth nothing. That's that's for sure. And if you're going to write music, it better have something to say. If it doesn't, that's okay, I suppose. But if it doesn't have something to say, it better feel good. You know, it has to be high quality. You have to have a good team and the team has to have a singular mission. The product has to be good. So with, with, with your guys, with fatal conceit, you know, when you guys, uh, write a new song, is there a, um, is there like a thing where you guys like, how do you, how do you think the, the, this song isn't up to snuff? We we're not going to play this one or we're not going to do this. We're not going to carry on with this song. Do you guys go through that kind of, uh, checks and balances thing where, you know, if, if Tim say you come up with a song or Kate, you come up with a song, somebody comes up with a song, uh, this, this doesn't have it, you know, or are you guys just like, let's throw, let's throw it at the wall and see if it sticks, you know, how do you guys kind of approach, you know, uh, bringing a song out into the public? Well, at the beginning, it was, I have a library of music and I'm putting it into the band and they're adding to it. But now we're coming up with new things. And there seems to be a mix of the, I if I write a song or if we write a song together or if you write a song, that we like put it through the rigor of the band. And we get a lot of really great feedback from the from whomever isn't the songwriter and that ends up adding a lot to the song yeah it's like a third it's like a third party perspective kind of and joe our guitarist is really good at kind of keeping us in check because i feel like tim tim does the majority of the writing for the band when it comes to to lyrics and music and i do make some edits to lyrics um if i think something could be better but joe is really good at making sure you know there's actually body to the work and it's not just like this super thin just radio rock that you know is so simple he actually makes sure that it's complex which i love it's really tempting to just like think commercial what is selling and just write whatever that is so it's really nice to have a presence like joe because joe is so his background is pretty bonkers i mean he's a violin player he was principal um violinist in a number of orchestras uh he has his own project Shout out for Gelling. Um, his project is Gelling. It's an instrumental guitar virtuoso group. It's really, it's actually really something to, to it's behold. It's really fun. It's really and fun. Uh, he brings some next level shreddage to the mm-hmm. to the team. And he also will like, he'll point out a moment in a song and be like, wow, Tim, like, I, I know you can write better than this. Why, what, where was that? And I just, it's great to see. You know, it's great to have on the team. Yeah, he brings a lot. He brings a lot to 
to the band and james does too oh. james is <laughs> james we're like hey do this thing and he's like yeah i can do that thing and, and then he, he just, just does, does it, it. <laughs> it's amazing it's so easy does it <laughs> Must be nice to be in a band that's actually productive. <laughs> you know, so yeah, there's a lot. There's, I mean, we do kind of. We're all really good friends too, and we can be open and honest with each other about what we're feeling in regards to the band without anybody getting any hard feelings. But we do think of it like from a business perspective oh, yeah. as well. It's definitely framed in that way, at least, and and it does help with that because when you when you approach it from a business perspective, it's really easy to take your ego out of the picture and be mm -hmm. like, "Wow, what's just best for the band?" You, to... you didn't tell me that riff sucks because you wanted to hurt my feelings. You told me that riff sucks because Tim, that riff, it's a mistake. It sucks. <laughs> right. Put that riff yeah, away. So we're good about stuff like that. So you mentioned <laughs> earlier about uh, not writing songs with the uh you know commercial like f you know the commercial rock thing you know is there a reason for that you know why not just take the easy route and write a catchy three and a half minute three chord uh rock song i feel like it's because we have a lot to say i mean you can i mean you there can, are great songs that, yeah. that have that though. but there's another layer i mean when when an artist does their best to try to make the art more interesting. I think everybody benefits from it. And sure, you can like, fine, Three Doors Down was great about three chords, right? And like, that was a really great sound for the time. But if you're trying to do something interesting and really stay, it's you can't just sound like the other bands that are playing. You'll end up yeah. in the, the position where you have those sound-alike bands. There was that phase Avenged Sevenfold went through where they were just like doing classic sounding rock and it was just, they sounded like a Metallica kind of sound and that was like a low point for me in my listening to them. The Hail to the King album was mm -hmm. just like, dude, like you guys, I know you can do better. And then when they came out with the stage, they did, they did do better. I was going to say, didn't yeah. Headfield write some riffs for Avenged Sevenfold? I think Hail to the King was a Headfield riff, wasn't it? But, you know, you mentioned, you know, as being kind of a passive Avenged Sevenfold fan, you know, the stage did horribly, you know, as far oh, as know, sales. Which is sad because it's my favorite album of theirs. It's right. like, do commercially better. You know, the it's... Thing we were focused on, too, is making sure that we stood out in the same way that the bands that made us pick up instruments in the first place stood out. So that was important to us too. So how we do you? Wanna, we want to be that band that makes people pick up an instrument and get interested in music. Sometimes I think of it as like entry level metal or rock, mm -hmm. like Breaking yeah. Benjamin or Three Days Grace. Those are the. I mean, I literally picked up guitar to play Breaking Benjamin songs. Full stop. Uh, going into the chat, we do have some questions, and I'll let you guys promote this one because I know when your next show is. But Dan Lee in the <laughs> chat wants to know when your next show is. You know, I'm actually not sure about you know, that. I think there was this really, it was a cool dude. Oh, yeah. It's so got like a radio show. Like, oh, yeah. Ricky, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He rocks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He rocks. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. yeah. We're playing Ricky Rocks. Yeah. 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 Annual birthday show. Um, it's 13th, right? 16th. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. I love it. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Simon's After Dark is yeah, going to be a lot of fun. fun. We're opening that show, and this is the first for us. So. <laughs> See, only Ricky can get Fatal Conceit with 30,000 views of a music video to open Hopefully. a show. <laughs> hey, and we're yeah. happy to be there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, in all fairness, you had people like, already you had people lined up like starting at the last show. Heck yeah. So we were lucky to get in on that. And you know, we happened Me too. to see you at, uh, it was Virginia. We went oh, to a yeah. music festival. Yeah, we oh, went to God. the um, Blue Ridge Rock Fest and yeah. saw Casting Shadows play there, it which was, was awesome. I actually tried to buy Ricky a beer. I was like, I was like, hey man, let me buy you a beer, like bass player to bass player. And I went and I bought the beers and I'm holding them and he took off. So I had He's to like, it isn't Jack. Jack. It's <laughs> not Jack Daniels. I'm out of here. Fuck this. <laughs> Fuck this amateur. Come on, Red Blue Ridge, man. It's got to be Jack. Back to find him, and he was just long gone. He's gone. <laughs> Jesus. And I guess I just heard this too, since you brought up Blue Ridge. Casting Shadows is not going to be playing this year. Oh. We just, we just got, we just got oh. that. Uh, anyway, so. We just got that news. <laughs> Right. But but they were willing to give us a discount on tickets if we wanted to come out and see the show anyway. I'm like, oh, tell them the fuck, <laughs> tell them the fuck off. If I ain't playing, I ain't going. Fuck that. <laughs> no, Blue Ridge wasn't 
was a lot of fun. I would definitely go. Oh my again. gosh, it was absolutely wild. Some of the craziest not. pits I've ever seen were at that at that festival. Jesus, the craziest pit that I have ever been to was when I went to Disney World and I had to go across. Uh, oh, go across. Pit of I, 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 oh, I didn't. I didn't even get to talk about this, you know. So I had to go get uh, frozen cokes for the kids and all that. Oh. And the one place that had it was on the complete other side of the park, and it was right before they were doing the fireworks and shit. So I have like all these frozen cokes in my hand, and I'm trying to get across to like this mad swarm of little kids and their parents and strollers, <laughs> and I ended up dumping like three of them. <laughs> and so I'm like, dude, this is the worst pit I've ever been in my life. Is the right from magic, right in front of the fucking Cinderella's castle at Disney World. Uh, so, uh, you know, going into new material for you guys, it, you know, you guys are still relatively new. So, you know, the songs that you already have for a lot of people are are fresh and new but i know firsthand that you guys are recording uh new material i went down to the sound shop to hang out with the band with kevin wesley williams oh, nice. and so cool of you. yeah we're actually headed there tomorrow to finish up um recording vocals and then it'll be done it'll be done it'll be ready. in the can so easy, easy. what are we looking at for new material are we looking at one song here and there are we gearing up for an album are we gearing up for new music videos what are we gearing up for here with fatal conceit for an ep yeah, yeah. so when i was Tim, i was the leader when i was talking to jordy who's our who's our friend with unleashed music uh he he had this idea for for pods of songs so this idea that you can put together, even EPs might be too ambitious for the actual return, right? So mm. uh, groups of three songs or four songs, if you get to five, call it an EP, whatever, but albums are, they're just tough to market, right? So um, Jordy uh, suggested that we do three, and uh, right now we've got this new song coming called Devil's Little Helper. It's written by um, drummer Hunter Grunwald. Uh, Hunter is the drummer for oh, um, the half of it, Jalen's band. Um, he's a uh, he's he's crazy good. And when I I asked him, he's like, hey, I was like, hey man, can we like, can we like cover this song? He's like, okay. I was like, dude, really? Actually, yeah, seriously? We're really excited about it. So um, it's always been one of my favorites too. Oh, it's it easily been my. The riffs are just so much fun to play, and uh, so that's the next song. And we're we're working on a follow up. Not sure what it's going to be quite yet, maybe. Unless Don't I worry, nobody's listening. You can tell us uh, exactly what's going on. <laughs> I guess I'm in the dark about the woo woo woo, too. Maybe. Ow. This is Sunny. He is a dog. No, oh, cute little donkey. And another thing, you know, I wanted to bring this up too. Uh, when I was hanging out with you guys at the studio uh, a couple weeks back, you have a, you have a video guy who is recording yeah. video uh t take us through you know because when you guys told me what uh the that project was is you know take us through what this uh video project that uh that you guys are working on so justin was introduced to me by dan lee in the chat with a fellow named peter putman uh he works uh, he's got this um uh, this group called broken television and we go gosh that was like 2014 so it was it's kind of a long time ago, and uh, he did the music video for Taking Back the Name, and uh, gosh, he was so efficient with that, it was bonkers. And, you know, I, I said, hey, man, we're going to go to the studio. If you want to hang out with us, that'd be great. So he's like, okay, we'll hang out. And he comes in with this camera that is mind-blowingly just like, I have no idea what even it does. It's on like a harness, and it's got these like scopes on it, and there's a flasher thing, and a microphone. It was like he was holding a, a Decepticon. It was amazing. And uh, he's like, yeah, I just got to catch some B-roll for you. And he's doing this little, like, um, he was telling me he was doing some, like, rock doc style stuff. So he's capturing B-roll, and he wants to put out some stuff for us. I'm like, man, Justin, he, he's following us everywhere. And uh, he'll be doing the music video for the new song, Devil's Little Helper. Uh, we'll be re be recording that very, very soon. I'm excited about that, too. So uh, it's great. It's great to have him on the team. So there's going to be a, um, a documentary about Fatal Conceit. Do we know when yes. this is coming out? I have no idea. We are kind of just like compiling stuff right now, I would say. So it could be, there's so much, it's such a complex story to tell because there's been so many personnel changes. There's been songs that have come in and come out. Um, you know, everything with COVID-19 and 
I think there's a lot to say there. Yeah. Just even, even though it's only been around for really four years, there's just so much to say. But compiling footage for something like that. I mean, everything Justin's doing would make a phenomenal lyric video as well. Just recording at the studio and everything. It's, it's bonkers. He's capturing an 8K. Yeah, I don't even know really what that good. means. There's there's not That's that many bigger cameras. than four. <laughs> I can only count to four, so I don't know. <laughs> there it is. For bass drinks. player talk. We got it. Bass player talk. I can only count to four. That's why I tell people why I don't play guitar anymore. I can only count to four. I thought you were a one string player, Ricky. And I only play one string. Oh, thanks, Jordan. Um, you, we actually have a website, so you can go to fatalconceitband.com. www.fatalconceitband.com. for us, or from us from there. For right Slash now. merch. And we're working on some new designs. I'm yeah, trying I mean, my hand at art. <laughs> the top the seller art. on the website is a Make America Shred Again hat. <laughs> And, you know, we just need more than that. Yeah. So <laughs> we're getting some real art done. We were done. so inspired. We went to Hear This Fest, and we oh were my so inspired with the merch booth there. They so just many had, like, such out-of-the-box designs. designs. Um, I really like tarot cards, and they had this one. Hate, what, who was the band? Uh, now I forget. Um, but they had a really cool, like, tarot card-inspired, uh, like, long sleeve it shirt. It, it was just the coolest stuff. No, it was awesome. Forge the Sun had some great shirts. Yeah. Cyodyne had some good stuff. I spent way too much money me too. on merch. Got, they got me with all so those like, designs. Even Under Fire, we got some good shirts yeah. from them too. Yeah, That's... Ryan got a onesie. Ryan's a, a really good friend of ours, and he's been following us everywhere we go. And he, the got, he got his onesie. He's part of the onesie family. Oh, oh, epic piece. Yeah, yeah. So That's my pops thing. bought a coffee I cup. I couldn't do it. It says Shred Vibes Only. <laughs> shred Vibes Only in the chat. <laughs> shred vibes only. Everybody hashtag shred vibes shred only. Vibes, that is baby. Tim's thing. He it hashtags is. it everywhere. Live all the time. So, you know, moving forward, you know, what what is the, you know, ultimate goal for you guys? You know, what do you guys where do you guys want to take this thing? You know, are you guys gunning for the moon on this or you guys, uh, you know, what what are your goals going forward in 2022 and and moving forward from here? I know it's a huge launching pad, you know, playing the Ricky Rock's birthday blowout April 16th <laughs> at Simon's After Dark in Allen Park. Yes. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> a huge launching pad. Be in the documentary, you know, going to be our made it point. Well, I'm, I, I say that because Ave Under Fires played it, and then right after yeah. they played it, they got signed, and now they they're going signed. on tour it, with it, uh, a tray and anybody. shit. It wasn't like they got signed with johnny bag of donuts and flint doing his <laughs> pretend record they, they're with better noise they're with right. a yeah. legitimate serious effective label doing and good done stuff some really cool tours really good really stuff cool i think they're on tour with asking alexandria next and mm -hmm. who else is on that tour was it Don't ice nine me or a trey who's on that Atreus, and yes. some uh, a third band i can't remember who it is but uh another big right. theater tour uh you know and you know so <sighs> I don't know, Larry. You got anything for these guys? I'm running out of questions. Katie was supposed to send me talking <laughs> points, and she didn't. Um, I did. I didn't though. Them too. I didn't. I didn't contribute anything. He hasn't so looked at his phone all day. I'm just dead like, oh. now. So we kind of have a funny story, just like how Do Tim we? and I have known each other for what seems like way too long now. Yeah, let's but get into that. We have a. <laughs> we have. Wait, no. Yeah, wait, that's that's a whole story. There could be a documentary on that alone. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, let's get into that. Joe. So Joe and I went to high school, and I had gotten a tattoo last year, um, like right right on my sternum, and I had posted it to Facebook, and it had been a while since I had gotten a tattoo. And it was spicy. Joe, he was on his Facebook. He was making fun of my tattoo, like on his page, and because we're friends on Facebook, I saw it, and I was like, bro, just at me next time. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, you know, whatever. And then he and I got to talking. He didn't realize who I was because my last name is my ex-husband's last name and not my maiden name. So he's like, oh my, he's like, oh, are you Katie Costello? Like we went to school together. And I'm like, yeah. And so next thing we know, we went to Blue Ridge together. And we <laughs> then he Shout was just to in the band. He came with us too? Yeah. This is kind of funny how that happened because he was making fun of my tattoo and they were like, you want to be in a band together? That's how it all started. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's a thing. All right. So I did just pull it up. You did send me talking points. So let me know what we haven't talked about. We talked about how the band started. We got that. Uh, how you guys met. Let's do that. How did, since we got you two on the tip here, Tim and Kate, how'd you guys meet? 
So I was um, full-time faculty at a place called the Art Institute of Michigan. It is a now closed college, makes me mm -hmm. sad. Um, but I was coming down the stairs and there was this gal working the front desk and um, I'm obnoxious. If you didn't know this about me, you know this about me now. And uh, she was talking to somebody <laughs> about um, a skirt being cute or whatever, or having like, a skirt. Oh my gosh, your skirt is so cute. I was like, oh, thanks. Like, I have the same one. It's my Thanks. And I look over at him and I'm like, <laughs> what a like jerk. Are you? <laughs> like, who even are you? I was like, I work here. I didn't realize he was She's a like, professor. I work here. Yeah. Anyways, that's how we met. I, I went to school at the college that he taught at in different fields. I was studying interior design and he was teaching audio. Um, he actually helped me with a project for one of my classes because I'm not really technology like advanced when it, it comes to video for, making. It was a thing for vets, yeah? Yeah, and then we started to um, work on the band stuff together. I Since mm -hmm. I was sitting at the front desk, I offered to help him with social media since I was sitting there. And then that's actually how I met Jalen and that's how I met Hunter. We yep. all went to the same college and Jalen and I have been best friends ever since school, but I started to spend a lot, spend a lot of time in the audio studio there. And you know, Tim and I dated briefly for a couple years. Briefly. And <laughs> then we broke up and, you know, we've just been best friends ever since. It's one of those things that's a better friendship. So that yeah. brings up something. Okay, because we had that question. And that's all the time we have for today. Good <laughs> because we got to go back to the, the nuts and bolts and harsh truths question. Here we go. You know, where we had Jess from Lincoln, who, uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, if you guys, I don't know if you guys saw that part of the show, uh, but she's wants to date somebody who's in a band. And you guys, oh. since you guys dated, you guys... Uh, you guys know the the whole bit. Yeah. Uh, her question was, I'm not a musician, but I started dating a guy who's in a band. Do you guys have any tips or hacks in dating a musician? Since both of you guys are in, in a, a band. Um, I have known him for years. Just want to know what I would be in for if we started dating. So if you guys could give any tips to somebody who wanted to date a musician, what would it be? I, I mean... Even from just like our experience, communication is so important. And you can, I feel like if you want to date somebody that's in a band, you cannot be the jealous type. It was going to cause so much toxicity in their relationship because you have to understand like this person who's fronting the band, there has to be a certain kind of like openness type level with fans. You know, you can't not talk to your female fans because your girlfriend might get mad at you or something like that. Like you have to pose and take pictures with fans. I think it's important to just have that trust. Once that trust is broken though, if something happens, it's pretty much, it's so hard to come back from something it's true. like that. It's done. It's hard. Uh, all right, Tim, what do you think? I think that, so she really did a great job of like laying out the communication element of it, but you have to know there's a lot of things that are baked into the cake. You know, there's, you have to tolerate one to five hours of day of music, practice, work on social media, work on the songwriting, people coming over, uh, doing these kinds of things. Like mm. this kind of thing right now is an engagement you have to be ready to deal with. And if you're living with the person and you're not a part of it, you have to be in the other room hearing about it. So uh, there's a lot that's baked into the cake, you know, and when you're, when you're dealing with a person that is a musician, think of it like a small business. It isn't just a hobby. It can be, but it usually isn't. If someone's in the band, they want it to go somewhere. They want it to <clears throat> succeed. And if you don't support them, then like you are the one person that they are expecting to be there for everything, the baseline, the foundation, the real support. So if that's absent, man, it, it's, it, that will be a source of stress and it will be a source of problems and contention, especially as if, they, if things start to go great, all of a sudden you, the person in the relationship are gonna start competing with time, for time with the band mm -hmm. and that will cause tension. And eventually it can cause a break and that's that could be a big problem i mean i haven't thankfully haven't been in a situation in which i've had to choose between the person that i care the most for and the band but it i know people who have and it is really an ugly thing it's wow. ugly man wow there it is <laughs> have, like, two guess what the, perspectives here the band wins like for me <laughs> 
the girl, you know, it's the girl asking the question. There's a lot to be open about with communication. And for you, it seems like you're saying, you know, this girl has to make sure she's this guy's number one supporter. But it, the street goes both ways. Mm -hmm. You Absolutely. as the whoever is in the band has to make sure that the person that you are dating is getting the, the attention that they deserve to get from a relationship as well. It's not all about, oh, support me, follow me do whatever I do, you have to give that same attention back to the person that you're dating. But it's also important not to think of it as transactional. If you're in my position, it would be so easy to think like, hey, if if you support me, then I will give you my affection. That would be the wrong way to approach it. Mm -hmm. And I know there are, I know of at least a couple of people in my life who have had dynamics like that. And it's just, it, it can be an ugly thing. Yeah. Wow. So we're getting yeah, we're getting yeah. in deep. So hopefully yeah. Jess who sent that question gets got four different perspectives on this thing. Yeah. So, you know, you guys uh you guys have new music coming out. Kevin Wesley Williams is working with you guys doing all this. Shout out sound shop. And you know, you guys are going to cut uh vocals and all that uh tomorrow, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the harmonies left and we're done. So and a thing I wanted to ask Tim. You know, being in a band with somebody who is also a lead uh, lead singer, uh, does Kate ever tell you, hey, you're not hitting the notes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> all the time. I'm not scared, and he tells me the, the same the thing. The two people I count on the most to be brutally honest with me are Joe and Katie, and they're really, they hold me accountable. And, yeah. and then even I when I'm like, like, I'm even oh, more brutally honest my than ego. Joe is. Ouch. They were great. I'd go back and listen and go, no, they yeah, they were right. Absolutely. Yeah. If like, there's objectively, two people that was not who good. are like super brutally honest with you, it's me and your dad. That's true. <laughs> it's just like brutal. Though. But Joe and James, they just, they, they also like, that's the way it is, man. Yeah. Just do do gooder. No, do good. <laughs> they do the same thing for me. Like Joe gets on my butt too if I don't sound good, or and I ask for honest feedback because how are you supposed to get better? And you don't want your bandmates to like cringe when you sing, you know. Yeah. And another thing, you know, uh, you know, how's you know the dynamic work? Like, say, you know, you guys are writing a song and Kate comes up with a bass part or drums come up, you know, a, a, a drum part, you know, who's the one most likely to be like, yo dog, that fucking sucks. <laughs> who's, who's the one in the band? <laughs> I think I am. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. Yeah. It's, it's true. I'm just, it's I always mean, a woman. For, <laughs> <laughs> for, for me, I'm willing to give it a shot and think like, well, maybe there's something I'm not seeing. And Katie's like, no, the bar is here. We just got to, Tim, just meet the bar. Can, can, yeah. you, can, you, can you do that, please? But if somebody writes something and, you know, one of us, like, disagrees with it, we still keep it. We don't just throw it out the window. We all look at it together and we're like, how can we make this better to where it has a little bit of all of us in it? Or there's some way for all of us to contribute. Like, if Tim writes an amazing riff, but it needs to be tweaked a little bit so Joe can be or inspired to write an amazing solo for, you know, the song. And then I'm like, oh, what if we did these like cool harmonies or what if we did this type of melody? And it all kind of comes together that way. Exactly. Wow. Well, there yes. it is. Uh, <laughs> so, God, what else did I want to get into? I had so many talking points here and Kate only sent me five. Uh, I guess we can, I, I, I hate ask, I hate asking this question because it's the typical FM radio question and I hate this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What's your favorite food? Yeah, I hate the I hate these dumb questions. This is a question that I hate almost as much as promote what you got coming up, uh, which we'll get to in a minute. But uh, you know, artists that inspire you or favorite artists, blah blah blah. You want to go first or should I? I'm a weirdo when it comes to music. Same, so. same. Okay, yeah, you can go first. If somebody so, doesn't say Casting Shadows, I'm gonna throw a fit. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this band, Casting Shadows. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. They're great, but. Uh, uh, for me, my like my number one musical inspiration, I would have to say is um, my man Justin Furstenfeld, Blue October. Yes, yeah, he's such a, good a one. beast. He's the front man for the band. They've been around for a long time. That's uh, interesting. They, Blue October. It's like oh, they had oh, like oh, the yeah. one big hit, and then they and then they kind of like fell into the nether of anything. And I've never heard anybody say Blue October is one of my big influences. 
Oh, dude, they're my number one, man. And uh, yeah, so while, while Tim talks about some of his favorite ones, we would love if the people watching would put their favorite bands in yeah. the chat as well. Put it in the chat. Put your favorite so bands the, in the um, chat. Do it. Stronger. My, uh, yeah, yes, the reason Justin, out. though, Blue October, I discovered them when I heard Into the Ocean in high school. And I was like, man, that's a that's a jam. And I had heard Hate Me. And then I had, so I became the like dedicated fan listening to all the stuff. And he went through this really dark period where he was like going through all kinds of mental stuff with divorce and drugs. And, and then there was this like, like snap moment for him where he got sober and the music just became fiery. And he came out with this, this album called Sway. Mm -hmm. And then, and then after that, and there was this one, I hope you're happy. And most recently, <laughs> uh, this is what I live for. These albums are all just like, I don't, I wouldn't say that they're easily accessible because it's heavy material. It's about sobriety and the struggle and faith and, 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 death and love and and <laughs> your, your wife leaving you because you're addicted to drugs and alcohol and losing your children yeah. and, and working the steps to get your children back and get your life back. It's, it's like the big stuff. So, you know, so that's, that's like the number one inspiration for me, if I could pick anybody. And, and you know, he, he founded his own uh, production company so he could make that his full-time singular job, doing it, the indie group under his own label, his own distro. And uh, actually, I think they're coming to the machine shop here this summer. I'm pretty excited about that, too, so... Yeah, it's good stuff. Your turn. Oh, real quick, you know, we're, oh. we're starting to get... Uh, people's big inspirational bands Ooh, out of, in the chat my mom loves miranda lambert Th that, that ajr is amazing karen rinse said miranda lambert steve ingle our our super fan from mississauga ontario said mc5 jalen oh, johnson says that. belmont uh caprice mm -hmm. says blue october Boston. uh ryan mcpherson ajr dan lee says Gun <laughs> guns and roses boom there it is there's my gnr <laughs> and greg is that your dad, Tim? Greg? Y yes, sir. That's my pops. He's a Boston fan. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Boston. I love Boston. Uh, Fiona says Metallica, Course Danzig, Maiden, uh, and my favorite non-local band, Fatal Conceit. Ah, and she also yeah. likes The Who. So super ah. cool. And Tori says Rush. Those are all great options. Honestly. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I, I got to go with Dan Lee and Greg uh, Martok, GNR in Boston. Ooh, yeah. Boston was the first <laughs> band to get me into rock and roll was Boston. Blasting. More than a feeling got me into uh, wanting to play guitar. And GNR <laughs> is the reason I still play. This is the reason I play bass. Right. Is Guns N' Roses. Well, yeah. <laughs> the I play bass. <laughs> I was just like, you're hired. <laughs> all right. So, Kate, over to you. For me, it's it's a little weird. I have such a strange taste in music. I will go from listening to heavy metal to like my shuffle will give you whiplash. I'll go from heavy metal to music theater. Next thing you know, Taylor Swift is playing. Next or thing you know, Tuna, you know, yeah, opera. classical music. I kind of <laughs> listen to it all, but um, as cliche as it sounds, just because when she came out, I was young and have been following her career. Taylor Swift has been a huge inspiration. She's such oh, a phenomenal. Cute phenomenal lyricist when it comes to writing songs um, and she's a great businesswoman too but on the metal side I love Ash Costello I secretly hope that we're rela related because my maiden name is Costello and if you I don't think know there's a lot of Costellos is, out there in the world she the, right? she's the lead singer for New Year's Day <laughs> New Year's is, Day is so good yeah it's a pretty pretty like upbeat female fronted metal band um, they're really cool but Sleeping at Last and Sasha Sloan are my other big inspirations, which is more like indie alternative music. But everybody I love, it all goes back down to the lyrics. So, you know, I can, I can like a band for their music, but I will love a band for their lyric content. Mm -hmm. Another question. This is <laughs> kind of piggybacking off this one. Tim, you as a singer, uh, guitar player, who would you say you model yourself after... You know, who is your big vocal inspiration to where you're like, oh, this is this guy or girl uh, made me want to sing. And then on the other end, what guy or girl wanted to make you pick up a guitar? So the person that made me want to sing was Bob Seeker. When I was a kid, my pops had put <clears> on 
uh, you know, the I like your dad. Of band recording. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like your your dad's, dad's kind of a was... badass now. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, he's, he's kind of Boston a Boston Seeger? <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. I, I share a birthday with Seeger. He'd, uh, he'd share stories about how he, he would uh, go see Bob Seeger at the local bars around Flint, you know? Yeah. And uh, so I would listen to those old recordings, and, you know, Bob's got a great voice. And, uh, you know, in high school, of all people, uh, Robert Downey Jr. has a jazz album. Did you know that? I did know that, yes. And it's quite good. And I, I, man, I just got so fired up about singing. But the people that I model myself off, um, off of, uh, gosh, you know, M. Shadows, Ben Burley, like those two, those are like the two for me. You know, there's, of course, lots of great spicy vocalists out there. But, you know, the, the singers I like, Avenged Sevenfold, Breaking Benjamin. And for guitar, I mean, it was literally Sinister Gates and like Ted Nugent, like just dudes that I would just listen to when I was in high school and I just wanted to just shred. It was, it was, that was everything, man. Well, Ted Nugent does a lot more talking now than he does play guitar. <laughs> I always tell Timmy sounds like the lead singer of Godsmack, too. But not as really. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, Kate, let's go over to you. As far now that you're a bass player, we're not going to go into the singing route. You know, playing bass, you know, uh, you have your normal bass heroes. You know, you have Les Claypool. the dude from the dude from Maiden. You have Claypool. You have you have Maiden all these Brown. guys. So Maiden when Brown, yeah, there you go. When Jason you're Johnson. when you're writing bass parts, you know, who do you kind of model yourself after as a bass player? It's kind of hard because I'm still, you know, I'm still kind of new to bass, so I can't say that I've encompassed enough of like the music industry to really focus on the bass side yet to know who I want to be. Nobody ever does. It's kind of like (laughs) taking bits and pieces from all the bands that I love and putting that into something. But Tim is right. I mean, the bass was never something that I followed, so I probably couldn't name ten basses off the like ten bass players off the top of my head. (sighs) But when it comes to my best friends, you know, Hayden Brown was the first person that I ever saw play a bass like he was born playing bass. No, you, you're supposed to say Ricky Rocks is my favorite bass player of all okay, time, and I model there. myself off Ricky Rocks. <laughs> our way. Jeez. We're going through the timeline here. And Jalen Johnson, who, you know, oh, has been my good. best friend since college, he has actually taken time out of his day to come over and to teach me how to play my bass. So, you know he gave me the confidence and Tim has taught me things. They're all really open and super helpful. And I wouldn't be where I am if it weren't for those people, including Ricky rocks. There or it is. Especially, yeah. uh-huh. Who did I forget? Oh, especially Ricky. Rocks. <laughs> You're like, wait, it's who? all about what? Ricky. I, I'm educating <laughs> the new right, generation of bass players. You, you, there you, you go. go. That's all you think about. To me. I'm inspiring the new generation of bass players. Since I'm an old crusty yeah. man. Now I'm going to the younger generation and teach them how to play <laughs> bass properly. <laughs> And another thing, you know, I want to ask Tim this real quick. Uh, from what I heard, there is a history with you and my band, Casting Shadows. Yes, okay, so let's talk let's about like, this just to tie this like, all together. Who did you date in Casting Shadows? I, all of them. They're just oh, okay. all beautiful people. No, the uh, oh, so back in like 2020, I, <laughs> I saw it. I might have been Kevin, I might have been Jeff, but like. He's like, we need a bassist. And I was like, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I like bass. I'll audition. Let's like, sure. And then we like almost set something up and then, you know, it didn't work out. So we almost set something up again and, you know, you know, it didn't work out. So then we almost set it up again. And then I guess we just like ghosted each other. And then I saw you guys play at Blue Ridge. So that's the whole timeline. And look at now we're all really great friends. Well, that's it. <laughs> Damn. Larry! That's my favorite thing. I'm just Larry! Like in the chat screaming Larry. <laughs> Somebody at the gym did that to me. Like, yeah, good. It's a thing. He's like, what's your name? I'm like, Larry. He's like, Larry! I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> and I thought of you, Katie. Yeah. <laughs> See, you did. It's a thing now. It's officially a thing. It's a Bring thing. It. <laughs> when I seen you at a you're like, Larry! Larry! <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Fatal Conceit. You know, you, you guys got the big show. It's it's looking like it's going to be pretty close to... So- I was t- talking to Larry. Larry! I was, I was talking to him about this earlier, you know, just on the response on Facebook and all that. It looks like it's going to be a sellout for for Seriously. for the show at Simon's. It's insane. It's a, you know, it's a small. Have you guys ever played Simon's before? 
Oh, yes. Yeah. One of our very first shows with Vox Ad Nil back in 2018, yep. uh, back when the lineup was Xavier, Hunter, Jalen, me, and Katie was managing. Yeah, we actually we, booked that show through Sherry Claire. Yeah. For Sherry Claire. We, we played that go. show, and, you know, I was like, wow, this is like a dive's it dive. Was a, it was our first time there. It was great, because, yeah. like, you look down at the stage, there's, like, three monitors, all of different brands, but yep. the sound was still surprisingly good, and the prices were great. The place was awesome. That's where I've done. Uh, this is my 13th uh, year of like when I started doing these birthday shows. This is what makes me feel old now that kids like Kate and Tim were like uh, all of like eight, eight years old when I started doing these. <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> you know, I was talking to uh, God. What was it? Uh, when Sidine played here this fest, I was like, oh, dude, it's so cool that you're playing my birthday show. Dude, it's so, so cool. He's like, oh, dude, Ricky, I, I've been following you since my, you know, my dad was in a band and he played shows with you uh, 15 years ago. I'd come to see my dad play and you were playing in a band. I'm like, now I'm old. I'm that guy <laughs> where it's like, oh, yeah, you remember seeing me when you were seven years old. He's You're like, really good for your age. Though. I look horrible for my age. I am no, gray no. and crusty. I never would have guessed that you are as old as you, you say you are. <laughs> there are people that are like, man, you are not. Stop. <laughs> I'm old. Uh, <laughs> have you ever seen me without dyeing my like beard? I look like Papa Smurf. <laughs> yeah, the, the grays are coming. The grays are coming in. You know, so the 13th annual Ricky Rock's birthday blowout, April 16th, uh, at Simon's After Dark. Fatal Conceit is going to be opening this uh, banger. Uh, Craft Conviction. I saw Caitlin Mueller. She was in the chat for a hot minute. Craft Conviction is going to be playing. And uh, Kate's one, uh, Caitlin is one of my good friends. She's kept me up during this whole down period of my life that I'm going through right now. Uh, she's been there for me, so I love Caitlin she's Miller. Right. Yeah. And uh, good friend for for a long time. And, uh, of course, Casting Shadows is going to play. I'm not, I was telling Larry, dude, I don't know when I want to put Casting Shadows because if I play too late, I'm going to be a fucking shit-faced. <laughs> and if I play... <laughs> If I play too early, then Jeff Land will get pissed off at me that we're playing at nine o'clock. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's going to be Fatal Conceit is opening, maybe Casting Shadows after that. If not, it's going to be Craft Conviction, then Casting Shadows, Cyanine, who killed it, uh, and then Fallen Stronger, Larry Smith, the infamous Mike Dropper. <laughs> He's going to be headlining it. I'm going to be hopping on stage with you guys, pending my uh, alcohol intake for the night <laughs> and rehashing something we did at Rockstock uh, was it five, five years ago, yeah. uh, doing, a, doing a song. Uh, and it's going to be super cool. So another question I wanted to ask you guys, you know, you guys are huge supporters of uh, Detroit bands. You guys go out to shows, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, who are some of your guys' favorite bands that you guys have oh, seen gosh, come out of Detroit? So no, you go, first. you go first. So if I could pick like my big four, um, absolutely would pick my, oh. my, my dudes in Ghidorah. They are OG peeps. Check out the half of it. They're insanely good. I just—it's like pop punk. Yeah, they're fantastic. It's like all different genres. Ghidorah is like really heavy metal. Ghidorah is like death metal, yeah. specifically death metal, and it feels very—I don't know—it just feels just very just heavy. like metalocalypse. Like it's the vocals are guttural, the riffs are spicy, the drums are brutal, the shredding is just—it's—it's it's a lot, and it's good. And so uh, Ghidorah, the half of it. My dudes in the half of it are great. They really bring it live. I, I really love to see them perform. They're they're just fantastic. They need to play more. Play more. Um, our friends in A War Within are in my big four because I don't know, they just their live shows are just great. And of course the shot Spencer. I would be remiss if I didn't mention Gelling in that group. Yeah. Because Joe, when he's in his like instrumental vibe, it's a different it's a different dude. He's just like superhuman. They've got this tune, Galactasy. It's like an eight-minute interstellar journey. It's like if Metroid were metal. It's amazing. Check them out. <laughs> Gelling. Your turn. Nice. I do um, I do really enjoy Eva Under Fire or Ava Under Fire. Eva. It seems like everybody pronounces it differently, but um, I like what they're doing. But I'm also a sucker for a strong female lead in a band. You know that. 
Um, the half of it, definitely. Jalen is in that band and he's my best friend. Ghidorah. Who else? Oh, War Within. I'm actually working with Spencer right now yeah, on a cover. Yeah, double secret, double underground, double. can't tell anybody yeah. about a cover. Yeah. No, ain't no way here. nobody hears anything. Let us know what's going on. Nobody's listening to this. No, 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 no. There, there's at least 20 people oh, that will yeah. not spread a spicy rumor. No, no way. No way. Rumors. It's, a, it's, it's not really. It turns out it's the secret. Pokemon theme. Um, it's not the Pokemon theme. But Jalen and I, we love listening to Black No Graffiti. Every single time we've seen them, we're always like, that's that's future wifey right there. They're so she's, good. She's so good. Um, Elsie Binks, I love listening to them, and I love working with Kevin. So Forge the a Sun. lot of the, yeah, Forge the Sun, a lot of people that I love, they just naturally happen to have those strong female leads because that's what I gear towards. It's true. I heard nothing about casting shadows or falling stronger in there. <laughs> casting shadows are falling stronger than our own at all. <laughs> and now After I'm like, the 16th will be company there. company excluded, right. obviously. Why did they have Fatal Conceit on? Oh, so they could promote their band. <laughs> See? There you go. Hey, this, hey, hey, it's uh, a win-win. We're going in the mind of our promoter. You know, I'm like, dude, I need to find some bands that will pump me up and make me feel good about myself. And it's like, find you guys are rattling bands. off these bands. I'm like, nah, I'm not hearing any Ricky Rocks or <laughs> Casting Shadows in there. No, right. I, do, I do enjoy Casting Shadows. I don't know, Larry, if I've ever actually seen Fallen Stronger. Oh, boy. You're in for a treat. Yeah. (laughs) There's a reason I book (laughs) Fallen Stronger on every single one of my birthday shows. Yeah, Yeah, we're hype. (laughs) Oh, we're hype. And and, and we're going to introduce two new songs um, on that show. At his birthday party. Oh, my gosh. That was so long ago. Also, we were drinking. (laughs) <laughs> we had a designated driver that night yeah. <laughs> Jesus Alright so uh, aside from the 16th uh, Which is in 13 days Oh my god it's, it's getting wow. crazy Time flies man mm-hmm. Ricky Rocks is going back to the birthplace of Ricky I think that I, I think that was Simon's was the first place I played Under the moniker of Ricky Rocks Was at Simon's After Dark in Allen Park uh, Probably about 20 years uh, 15 years ago that was the first place where I came out as Ricky Rocks. I came out of the closet as Ricky Rocks. Oh, I see. Yeah, and they have a Ricky Rocks burger there. My my poster is still up there yeah. after it is <laughs> after like eight years. I, my picture is still up on the fucking wall, and uh, you know. So after that show, what do you guys got going on? Focusing we on have, the releases. I we mean, have another show. We do have stuff coming June 11th. up. That's right, June 11th. We'll actually be playing with Forge of Sun, which I'm super excited about. We've never played with them before. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean... And Cicris. We're playing with Cicris. Cicris. Cy- Cicris. They recently corrected me. So, so this band, I had only ever read their name, and the whole time I thought it was pronounced like, you know... Uh, like like citrus, because it's spelled C I C R U S. Yeah. Like circus, but backwards. I thought it was circus when I first read it. <laughs> <laughs> Several times I said that too. So I was like, oh, citrus, like citrus. And then uh, Donnie, who's one of the guitarists in the band, they're like, cycrus. I was like, oh. Oh, I hate no, it when there's that nothing happens. more embarrassing than pronouncing. It's like when I went up and I said Ava or Eva, and they said it was Ava or Eva. I just, I'm, I just I'm don't still remember. Really not sure I just don't which remember. One it is. <laughs> Ricky, it's, you're the expert. Yeah, it, it's technically uh, Eva. Eva. Uh, Eva. Uh, that's that's the way they're putting it across. But I'm like, Eva. Bitches, I've known you guys since you guys were fallen or uh, fall prey. Uh, I'm calling it Ava. So fuck you. But it, they're like, no, it's Eva. It's Eva under fire, and that's how they pronounce it. Yeah, they have a they have a really great stage presence. I thought it was Slapnik and Friends. Yeah. Oh, Chris. And, <laughs> and I guess I can let people know there may or may not be an Ava under fire thing going on at the birthday show. I said there may be yeah. a secret headliner, Ta-da! but I didn't say who. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> All right, so as I'm gearing up your guys' uh, music video for taking up uh, the name, uh, what, where can people find information about you guys? We have a website. So if you go to www, as in World Wide Web, period, fatalconceitband.com, as in com, computer, you can find us there, and it has all of our stuff, really spectacularly written bios, written by I don't even know who, 
and oh you can find all of our music. You can catch all of our social Upcoming medias, shows, um, our merch. You can buy merch, make America shred again hats, you know, t-shirts like the one I'm wearing from Ghidorah, but it's, it won't say Ghidorah. It won't say Ghidorah. You have to go to their website and then buy their shirts. You should buy their shirts too. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> What? what did I miss? I'm not, I'm not sure. I can't read. <laughs> Bye, Ricky. <laughs> yeah, he went to the bathroom. He just said, hey, Larry, take over, bro. I'm out. <laughs> I, hope, I hope everything comes out okay. <laughs> right. So, so very, very, uh, very stoked too. to uh, play with you guys. Yes, I'm so excited. We're, um, we're actually working on a new cover that we're really excited about. We're nice. actually playing a new cover for the birthday show and kind of started talking about the next cover after that. Another thing that we'd like to know from the people who are still watching, if we could cover a song, since a lot of you guys come to our shows, what song would you like to see us cover? There's no wrong answers. There you the go. The dumber the better. I mean, the, the better the better. Don't make it dumb. Unless better you want to make it dumb. In which case I it's dumb. So let them know, guys. Let them know. Me. Let them know what covers you guys uh, want. Fiddle Conceit to uh, put on the chopping block. <laughs> Maybe we should do the Pokemon theme. Oh my gosh, that would be so. Joe much fun. suggested we do Power Rangers, which would be honestly a dream come true. Oh wow! Mighty Morphin <laughs> Power Rangers is a jam. The Jonathan Young cover is amazing. Right, right. It's so good. Are you guys planning any covers for the birthday show, Larry? Yes, we are doing. Uh, are we allowed to know? Sure, I don't care. You know, we'll do. We're gonna do Walk. We're gonna do Domination. Oh, we're gonna do Sweating oh, Bullets. You know, we're going to throw out the old Fight for your right to party. And fight for your right to party. Oh, wow, that was fast. I believe so. it's pronounced par-tay. <laughs> par-tay? I have a very weak bladder. The colloquial version. Yeah. Right. And we're, we're also... also uh, <laughs> Only if you do it with us, Jalen. <laughs> It's okay, Ghidorah. Yeah, we need, we're going to need to calm down those baselines a little bit. <laughs> we're just going to need to decaffeinate those slightly. <laughs> we'll make an arrangement. It'll be fine. So we asked, we were asking the chat what's, what songs they would like to see us cover because we actually have a surprise cover for Ricky for his birthday. Can you give so me a hint? No. Can, you give gonna, me... can I give you a hint? A um, hint. Um, two is better than one. Oh. That's much better than my yeah, hint. Yeah, it's a good hint. Right? That's much better. <laughs> better than one. Is, I yeah. don't know what that is. Because the only thing I can think of is like uh, Chicago 24 oh or 6 to 1. Okay, Pops. No, it's not that. But I'm old. What can Greg, I say? Greg says we should cover Thunderstruck, which actually we've been considering covering for a while and just making kind of like a gag out of it. Like once you start playing, like to have everybody run to the bar and get drinks that way. The bar, you know, makes a ton of money. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, dude, that's there. That's a game that I did once at my birthday show, uh, probably seven years ago. We did the Thunderstruck uh, game. You ever played that, Larry? No. Okay. Thunderfucked? Yeah, Thunderfucked. <laughs> It was. You can say fuck. I smoked some Alaskan Thunderfuck. <laughs> it was the year I had Dragsaw play it, and they uh, they played Thunderstruck. And, or no, we played it between bands and I made a big announcement. I'm like, hey, everybody get a beer. We're playing Thunderfuck. And they're like, what the fuck is that? So I had to explain it. Every time they say thunder, you drink, you drink. until until until, you until thunder comes up again. Then the next person drinks until they say thunder oh. again. Oh, so you got to oh, wait for that. Ah. So you, ah. Yeah. So if you have a beer and they're like, you say it, you sip your beer. Thunder. Yeah. So you're sitting there like thunder. You're you're drinking, 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 and then they say thunder again. The next person does it until they say thunder again. Oh. Okay. So, oh, so you keep drinking until the next. You're day. supposed to. I'm a debaucherous oh, yeah, the alcoholic. So. Every time they say thunder. You yeah, you're supposed to keep drinking it. until yeah. they say thunder again, oh. and you'll get fucked up. Yeah. You know, if you play the song two or three times, you're done. You know, <laughs> so we, yeah, we did that once, and uh, the guys at Simon's didn't like that I did that. But I'm sure the bar doesn't like you. Yeah, they, they, they didn't. They didn't like, like that because. Like, give, me, give me something to drink. Hurry. I need something now. I need, yeah. I need something now. <laughs> and of course, they forget to tip. What a bunch yeah. of jerks. <laughs> yeah. So this is good. You know, the 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 birthday show is going to be. Uh, Johnny Renhart from OGO just hit me up. He had to reinstall YouTube. Uh, the birthday show is going down April 16th. Simon's After Dark in Allen Park. Fatal Conceits will be opening it. Uh, Craft Conviction either playing second or third, depending on 
I think that's going to be a game time decision on whether <laughs> casting is going to be in that second spot or the third spot. Uh, we'll but see how you're waking up that day, or whoever's on <laughs> <there> first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who's on first? <laughs> Yeah, so if, if Fatal Conceit kills it and I decide I want to drink a shit ton, Casting Shadows is going to be playing second. If you guys drop the ball and... If we just suck. If you guys suck. Heavily even more, just at the bar. We'll we'll go over there. We're going to be playing third. If I do suck, it's not a big deal. So... My note not to end on. <laughs> All right, so you guys got the birthday show coming up. You guys got new music with Kevin Wesley Williams, phenomenal engineer, good friend of mine. And, uh, you know, you got the show at, what was that other show in June that you guys mentioned real quick? Yeah, we're playing with Forge the Sun and Cyrus. 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 Forge the Sun and Cyrus. Oh. Okay, Forge the Sun, Cyrus, and uh, I don't remember, I don't know that band. he keeps getting his claws stuck in the amplifier. Oh, I hate animals. Some people's pets, I tell you. And you guys are focusing on uh, releasing pods of music. Uh, Real quick again, what are pods of music? Because I'm a retard. So it's like, think of them as like baby EPs, like itty bitty EPs, groups of three or four songs. And the, the, the idea, the premise is that you just have only so many songs is what the market will tolerate in playlists. So if I put out like six songs maybe two or three of them will be considered for playlists, even if all six of them are excellent, right? Mm -hmm. So if you restrain some of the output, you're going to have some better luck in dealing with the playlist placement, which is where the real money is right now. Yeah. So is there any plans on, because me as an old guy, you know, I like to get my hands on physical copies of stuff. You know, whether yes, it be C- yes, whether CD, it be CDs sure. that my car doesn't play anymore okay. or vinyl, uh-huh. which I'm really starting to get into. I got a record play over there. I got, I got to throw some speakers on it. But are you guys planning on physical releases of this stuff? Are you guys going to go are. maybe? Yeah, we're going to do CDs. Um, maybe, you know, even be as trendy as releasing a cassette or a vinyl. <laughs> go um, back to the day. But we do want to say hi to a eight war tracks within. Are the way of the future. There will be fatal conceit. Yeah, eight tracks. eight tracks. There you go. A war within just jumped into the chat and we were just talking about them earlier. Um oh shit, you guys literally brought the rock stars. A war within yeah, I don't think they've yeah. ever tuned into my show. Wow. Spencer and I Spencer have been welcome. In the works and we, we saw them at Blue Ridge too, which we talked about a Man, little bit. And we we're saw in the them music at video here, here this fast, yeah. Joe was wearing uh, the skull the mask. Yeah. The, the what's Skellington, there it is. Yeah, they're great. And shout out to <laughs> Renee. She's just like the best. If you're talking about relationships and dating somebody who's in a band, Renee is just I think we're going to have to get She's Renee. She's such a sweetheart. <laughs> she, so cool. I used to watch Renee's uh, she, makeup. Renee does everything. I used to I used to watch you know when when Renee, she was Renee Norris at the time. Uh, she yeah. do she do her uh, makeup. She'd be doing her makeup and talking to people. And I and I did it once. I got a shit ton of because uh, I was doing my Ricky Rocks makeup right. for one thing. I'm like, dude, so Renee when I do makeup. No one tunes in. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Renee got a shit ton of uh, viewers yeah. on her Facebook Live. I did one. I'm like, when I'm putting on my uh, Sad Panda makeup, and I got a shit ton of viewers. And then I was a huge fan of Renee. And yeah, so her. She's such a sweetheart too. Spencer's lucky. He looked out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, they're, I, they're I have yet great. to meet. I have yet to meet Spencer yet. I, I oh, saw him. At, good dude. That's yeah, funny. no, I have yet to I meet Spencer yet. <laughs> I think I give that guy shit every yeah. single time I go to a <laughs> show with him. He the gives poor shit guy. back. Too. That poor guy. He's not scared <laughs> to give shit back. He's a lot of fun. Yeah, I I was that when I talked. Uh, this was before you ran the show, Larry. I was talking about how I was auditioning for a band. And uh, one of the guitar players that I was jamming with used to play drums for a war with them. And that's as close as I've ever gotten to or within. Right. I've never met Spencer, but uh, super cool. So uh, you guys want to let's let's do the wrap up thing because we're at nine thirty. We've gone a half hour over. Oh, but we're having that's so much bonkers. fun. Oh, I it's know. Past bedtime. It, uh. Yeah, it is past my bedtime. I actually I actually do have to go back to work tomorrow Ooh. for the first time in months. Oh yes. So I get to go back to work tomorrow, putting doors together. That's going to be a shit ton of fun. Uh, so, you know, what are uh, throw throw your shit out there, your social media, your uh, upcoming shows, uh, anything that we haven't touched on yet um, that you want to get out there, throw it out. 
I think we pretty much threw. We we only have two upcoming shows right now because we've been spending a lot of time in the studio with Kevin recording. Um, so after that is all wrapped up and done, we'll be booking more shows. Other than that, you can follow us all individually on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. It's Tim is on Parlor. I don't go near Parlor. It's, <laughs> it's uh, mostly Tim's on Grinder. <laughs> Grinder. <laughs> <laughs> He's on Grind. Dude, no shit. Okay, hold on. Let's 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 stop real quick. Let's stop real quick because uh, when Kevin Razlog was my co-host, he was like, "Dude, I was on Tinder," and you know, before he was married and all that. And he's like, Bef- we'd play a show in like uh, St. Louis or something like that. I'd start hitting up chicks in St. Louis saying that I was going to be down there. And I hit up about five or 10 of them and five or 10 of those people would come out to our show thinking that it was like a date, but it was like five <laughs> or 10 people. I just came out to shows because <laughs> right. they were into, into Raz and all that. So I'm like, you can't knock down grinder or Tinder and all that. <laughs> Throw your shit out there when you play right. out of town because be like, hey, you want to go on a date? We can meet at this because people want their first dates. This is how Kevin put it across. He's like, dude, for like a first date, people want to be around a lot of people. They don't want to be alone. So when you put put out a show, they'll be more likely to show up. So he's like, every time we play out of town, every time we'd play out of town, I'd go on Tinder when I was single and hit up all these hot chicks. And then they'd show up and they'd pay to get in and all this. And then I'd never contact them again. And they, and they all paid. Oh, that's so messed up. I believe they, the band is called ghost. And, and, yeah. There and then go. they all, they all paid to get in. So we were playing in St. Louis in front of like 40 or 50 people our first time out. And they were all just chicks that I right swiped on Tinder. <laughs> so I'm like, dude, that's genius. It is genius. Uh, so there you go. Cat guys. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. We left Tinder. Uh, Tinder's a mess. Oh my goodness. I feel like nothing good comes from but Tinder. Yeah, you can catch us on at Fatal Conceit Band on most things except Twitter because there's not enough characters in the handle, so it's at Fatal Conceit US. Oh, Fatal Conceit was taken you. by The Economist, so I oh, couldn't. Yeah. Couldn't yeah, Tim there. picks really weird band names. Oh, the weirdest. The weirdest. Oh, my poor, my poor bandmates. <laughs> so yeah. you know, I mean, real- we had Vox Ad Nil, and then it was Extremist, which people always thought it was Extremists, like we were all extremists. Which- <laughs> and then it turned to fatal conceit and i was like what are these words even where are you getting these from 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 the economy yeah okay <laughs> from, it's good for the economy in this economy <laughs> something for the economy call band broke <laughs> oh, 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 with these well, gas prices dog. seriously hashtag on, 20 in okay. a tank ain't 20 like it used to nope. yeah just I imagine know, how that gosh, ride how was from florida no to get up here from Florida with all of that gas probably costs as much as all the plane tickets. No, it cost me, let's see, I had to fill up the tank three times. Uh, oh, it cost it. me about 160 oh, bucks in gas. Were you driving like a Prius? What were you? See, I drive like 90. <laughs> My dad taught me how to drive. No, it's really cool because all those so redneck better. states like Georgia and shit, gas was like 375 a gallon. And I'm like, oh, God, it's like literally Florida and Michigan have the worst gas prices in the world. Right. You know, going through Tennessee, Kentucky and Georgia. (laughs) Yeah. Tennessee, Georgia and Kentucky. You know, I'm like, dude, gas is like 375. I know when we get home, it's going to be like 419. Right. So I like juiced up every single time. I'm like, I can't beat 375 a gallon. Uh, So keep going. Anything else you want to throw out there? You guys got the website. Uh, head on over there. What kind of merch you guys got rolling? We got t-shirts, t-shirts hats, hats, some cool, cool sweatpants, uh, mugs. We got some mugs for, that for say "Shred your, Vibes Only." Your cold and, and hot things for, for the caffeine that addicts be, like me. Need to be held. Yeah, the most, the most are the stupid hats. So, so buy more than the stupid hats. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep plugging that. You know. All right, so there it is. You can catch Fatal Conceit. We're going to be looking at the music video for uh, Taking Back the Name right after we get off the tip with you guys. And uh, April 16th, head on out there. I got to self-promote because I'm a whore. I'm a man whore, and I want people to show up to my show (laughs) to self-aggrandize my ego. Maybe we can get a war with Indicum. They're in the chat. Come out to Ricky's birthday show. And a huge thanks to Ricky and to Mike Dropper. Larry. 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 Thank you so much for having Larry. us. It's been he, absolutely wild. Larry needs his own merch just for the Larry. He does. <laughs> right, right, he right. does. You need, you need your own merch. I'm, a, I'm, a, dude. I'm telling you, it's going to be a thing. We're starting it right now. Okay. It's going to be a thing. Larry. Larry. <laughs> 
All right. <laughs> so you guys got anything else to throw out there? That's well, it. Just, just one last thing for the people who may have joined on a little late. Um, the music video that you're about to see does not feature our current guitarist, Joe. It does feature the old guitarist, Sean, who helped produce the song. So that is one difference that you'll notice. But Joe is very much still a part of the band, so there's not any confusion after that video plays. And check out Sean's stuff. He's Dead yeah. Wing. Yeah. Dead Wing is Dead a hardcore Wing. band in Florida. And, his, and Dead uh, Wing Productions. Yep. He produced and mixed the, the song for us. Yep. All right. So there is Larry. You got anything? No, I, no, I don't have That's anything. It. That's it, man. I'm a man of no words. We, we bring you in for the gun show. <laughs> the gun show. There you go. All right. So, Tim, Kate, we will see you April 16th at Simon's After Dark in Allen Park. The 13th annual Ricky Rock's birthday blowout, Fatal Conceit, uh, Craft Conviction, Casting Shadows, Cyadine, and Fallen Stronger. You guys be good. No. Don't get into any Just trouble. For one hand. <laughs> there. Oh God, I remember when I was young. <laughs> for one hand. All right. Uh, rock. Take it easy, guys. Take Bye. it easy. Thank you. All right. That was uh, Kate and Tim from uh, Fatal Conceal. Let me throw it back over to here. And uh, we're going to be playing their music video now for taking back the name right here on episode number 133 of the Ricky Rock Show. We'll come back, close this thing out. Be right back after this. Rocks100.com.
So there it is. Uh, taking back the name by Fatal Conceit. Awesome. A huge thank you to uh, Tim and Kate, uh, vocalist and bass player from the band, uh, for taking some time out and uh, talking to us. If you haven't and you're still sticking around, make sure you subscribe and uh, to our YouTube channel so you can keep up to date with everybody we are talking to next week on the show. We're going to be talking to uh, Ashton Blake from uh, the Native Sons of Louisville, Kentucky. And then uh, episode 135 ep uh, on April 17th. Wow, this beer is hitting me hard. Uh, we're going to be talking to the guys from Wild Ride of Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, episode number 136 on April 24th, where we talked to my good friend Angelo Coppola, the drummer from Max Saturn, mm -hmm. where we talking to him. And then fast forward to episode number 139, May 15th, where we talking to Rob Kaminsky from The Creeping Chaos, yeah. uh, another awesome friend of mine. Uh, who I've known for many, many years. They wanted to play a birthday show, but they're playing uh, at the machine shop that night. So you can't really blame them for right. that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay, you guys get a pass on that. So what were some takeaways that you got from that interview with uh, Tim and Kate? Some takeaways? Yeah, anything you learned or uh, anything that stuck out in your head? Oh, man. I mean, Tim is fucking knowledgeable, bro. He's got a lot of knowledge, man. <laughs> Yeah, and I was talking to you during the during the break, you know, when I had left Casting Shadows, uh, what was it, a couple months ago, uh, with Kevin and uh, Danny, uh, before they decided they didn't like me anymore, uh, you know, I already had Tim, you know, agreed to come on and pretty much take Jeff Land's spot, you know, and unfortunately that's something that's never going to see the light of day but we had talked about it. i went to go see fatal conceit at um parts and labor down in uh wyandotte i believe and i had talked to him about it hey cast and shadows is over and starting new band with the rest of the guys that they saw at blue ridge right. and we need a new singer and he was totally on board he he had supposed you know he said i have songs that were perfect if you want to stay in that same uh, line of rock music and all that. And Kate was like, you're not taking my lead singer. And I was like, oh, we'll see. About that. <laughs> we'll see about that. And uh, you know, things work out for the best. You know, I'm, I'm still with casting and uh, fatal conceit is doing awesome and uh great band. Both those guys have been excellent friends of mine over the last couple months with all the, the garbage I've been going through, you know, in life you know they're a good sounding board for me and i appreciate those guys more than musicians uh but as really good friends of mine so it's super cool um so yeah upcoming uh upcoming shows that i have coming up as far as emceeing shows um march no oh, that's over and done with uh i didn't up Grade that. Uh, the 13th annual Ricky Rock's birthday blog going out April 16th. Fatal Conceit, Fallen Stronger, Cyanine, Casting Shadows, and Crafting Conviction. $10 at the door. 100%. Uh, 100%. I don't have to pay a sound guy. I don't have to pay room booking. 100% of the money that comes in the door goes to the bands. You know, uh, I throw this out there. You know, when you do a show at Diesel or at uh, Sanctuary or any other venue, uh, they charge you for a sound guy. They charge you room rentals and all that. Simon's After Dark does not do that. So 100% of the money that comes in the door is getting distributed to the bands. It's not going to me. It's not going to the bar. Kevin, the guy that owns the place, known the guy for 20 years. He, he's like, dude, Ricky, 100%. He, just get, just have your own door guy. I'll do the sound. And he does a phenomenal job at 100%. So every cent of that $10 will go to support independent music. And that helps them, you know, it helps, it helps the bands, uh, record new music, get new merch, you know, mm -hmm. Uh, you know how it is, oh, you yeah. know, being in a band, you know, every dollar, you know, you know, every dollar goes into the bank fund and all that are the band fund, uh, to pay for re-upping on t-shirts, you know, studio yeah. time, whatever it is. So that's the reason that I decided to move it over to Simon's because I w really wanted to mostly with COVID and all that and bands being out for a year and losing whatever money they can make. I was like, dude, let's just do that Simon. So every dollar that comes in goes to the bands, right. you know? So, you know, five bands, $10 a pop. Every person that comes in the door, the bands are going to be making $2 a head. 
you know, and if, you know, the capacity of place about 200 people. So let's do the math, you know, 200 people showing the door, each band walks out of there with 400 bucks, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that can uh, re up your t-shirts that sure. can re up, uh, you know, get a band in the studio to re record a song, you know? So that's why I, it's very important to come out and support local bands yes. any, any chance you can, because, uh, you know, they need that money to keep this, keep their thing going, you know, and you know, you're going to be helping fallen stronger, come out with a new song, get some new merch. You're going to be ha helping uh, uh, fatal conceit, you know, pay for their studio time and new merch. You're going to be helping casting shadows pay for my bar tabs. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's a thing you're, you're helping out yes, and it, it's going to be super cool. We got some <laughs> awesome stuff planned. Uh, you know, don't want to let, I guess I'll just let it all out of the bag. You know, going to have my buddy uh, Dakota Star come up on stage with uh, Casting Shadows. We're going to be doing some Rage Against the Machine. You know, I'm going to be hopping on stage with Fallen Stronger. Going to be doing a song with you guys. Uh, we'll see how that goes. It might be worth the price of admission to see me fuck up belligerently drunk of playing the easiest song in the world. <laughs> worth the price of admission by itself yes, so it's, it's gonna be super cool a super fun time and i do this every year uh with the bands that i enjoy hanging out with that mean something to me and all the bands on these bills uh, that i do for the birthday show they're not just bands that i'm just like just need a band no they're all bands that mean something to me fatal conceit has you know tim and, and kate have been there for me uh venting kate mueller and, and the guy and the guys from Craft Conviction have been huge supporters of of myself. Cyadine, they're a great band, and you know I I love Noah. I I love the guys and their enthusiasm. Them being so young and you know right. super cool. Uh, of course, I have to play, so I have to throw Jeff a bone <laughs> and throw him on there. And right. then you guys have always you guys are my buddies, and so it's gonna be super cool. It's gonna be a lot to me. Definitely head out. It's only 10 bucks and the drinks are super affordable. You're not paying $9 for a Jack and Coke. You know, it's, you can get a Ricky rocks burger. That's still a thing over there at Simon's after all these years. I'm gonna try one of those. <laughs> it's, it's a cheeseburger, dude. It's, 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 not, it's nothing like crazy. Cheeseburgers. It's nothing crazy. It's a fucking cheeseburger, but I can just say I ate one, man. You know, yeah. I, I gotta the, try once. The Ricky rocks burger is still there. And if you're friends of Kelly Tucker's uh, friend of ours from uh, way back in the day, you know, that's where he got his start and all that so it's gonna be super cool it's gonna be nice to bring it back uh to play one of the places where i started many 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 years ago like i said one of the first places i played as ricky rocks and uh you know if it goes good maybe i'll do some more rock shit down there you know they're kind of being inundated with hip-hop and all that garbage down there right, so right. hopefully bring some uh rock and roll back to down down river so uh super cool Super cool. Uh, Larry, you got anything that you want to throw out there? Uh, yeah, I'll throw in a couple things. Uh, Fallen Stronger. Uh, we have the uh, Ricky Rocks 13 annual birthday bash on April 16th. Um, April 23rd, we'll be at Detroit State of Mind with Rich Thompson mm -hmm. doing the podcast mm -hmm. there. Uh, May 13th, back to Simons for uh, Pigweed. 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 Very cool band. Very yeah. Cornish. I like it. Yeah. And then uh, the only other show we have after that would be June 11th at Diesel for Battle of the Bands. Wait, what? Battle of the Bands? Battle of the Bands. Why man. are you doing a Battle of the Bands? Why would you do it? You know. What's the Battle of the Bands for? Like, what do you get if you win? I don't know. Some EP thing. That. Uh, don't you feel like you're like 16 again? You know, it, even though you weren't singing in bands when you were 16, <laughs> but for me doing a battle of bands, I'm like, dude, I'm an old man. I'm not doing a battle of band shit. That's, that's fucking, <laughs> you know, I, I, I said to the guys, I'm like, you know, we'll try it. We, We've never done a battle of the bands. We'll, we'll try it. We'll Worst case scenario. It's a show. And it's a show. It's, it's a show in June or whatever. Yeah. Basically it's, it's, it's diesel. It's, pretty much been a home base for us right but, you know so i said fuck it we'll do it <laughs> fuck it fair enough i <laughs> I, I i hate battle of bands and it sucks that I, you know i didn't get to talk to tim because they do a lot of ticket sale shows and 
I've had long talks with them about those. Uh, maybe it's something I can throw up on the channel. Once I get a new computer over here, I want to do, start doing a series of uh, videos trying to help bands, right. you know, like whatever, right. whatever it is. But doing like a series of videos and all that. So uh, that's all we got for this oh, episode. Oh, man, what do you got? We have our whole new merch line coming out, which will oh, be... Oh, shit. Is that the we'll, one we'll uh, with the tank and all that? Not the one with the race car. And, oh, the race you know, car. Richie hanging off my eyebrow and shit. <laughs> Uh, we have that, and we have a shirt for the new single, Countdown to Death. So we we have two shirt designs for that show. We got hats. We're going to have stickers, CDs for the uh, Ricky Rocks birthday bash. Super cool. So it's going to be a fun time. Uh, April 16th, Simon's After Dark in Allen Park. Uh, the link is over on uh, the Rocks and Hunter Facebook page, as well as every single band that's on it. They've everybody's doing, been doing awesome at promoting it. Um, look it up: 13th annual Ricky Rocks birthday blowout, Simon's After Dark in Allen Park, April 16th. I'll be a lot more drunk than this <laughs> when it comes time for me to play a song with Fallen Stronger. Yeah, you got to be there. You got to you got to be there. You have to experience it. You know, I've been posting stuff on there, you know, like uh memories and shit from that like that. Right. It's a whole different piece when you're there. It's is you know, the birthday shows mostly at Simons have been really kind of like either they'll be completely awesome and something you'll remember forever or something that you'll wish you forgot. <laughs> you know so either way is price of admission 10 bucks all the pr everything goes to the bands and uh you know we're gonna be super cool everybody's gonna be there having a good time and drink super affordable ricky roxburgh is gonna be there and uh it's gonna be super cool so thanks to tim and kate from fatal conceit uh we're gonna close this thing out with the creeping chaos i decided to throw them on there because they were cool enough. Rob was cool enough about rescheduling and letting us have Ashton Blake from uh, Native Sons on next week. And so we're going to be talking to him uh, in May. So we're going to play some uh, Fatal Conceit. Um, no, we're going to play some Creeping Chaos. <laughs> what did I say? Fatal Conceit. God damn. <laughs> I need to stop drinking so much. Uh, going back to the chat, I want to throw out a uh, shout out to Karen Rince. She gave uh, an emoji thing. That was a thing. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. You can see it on the chat. And uh, going to get out of here before I'm making bigger ass of myself and uh, play some Creeping Chaos. Not Fatal Conceit. Creeping Chaos. <laughs> Uh, okay we love you rob all right i'm getting out of here all right you guys have a great night have a, a phenomenal week we'll talk to you next week right here on the ricky rock show rocks 100 <sighs> <sighs> dot com <laughs>